Hey everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to episode 36 of the Choking Hazard podcast with my usual co-hosts, Sugar Free Nos over there. Oh, you woke me up, that intro took too long. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, that was so <laughs> loud. <laughs> and uh, RDT down there. And our, uh, our guest tonight is a fellow YouTuber who's been around the GTA 5 scene for quite a while. It's GTA Wise Guy. Welcome. Hello. Hey. Thank you for joining for us me. on this pokey little show. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking about this in the pre-show, how I tend to always ask the same question when we have a new guest. And it's always the most difficult one to answer for anybody, really. Yeah. But how how would you describe yourself to people who are in the chat who've never seen anything that you've done before, never seen a video, don't know who you are? How would you describe yourself? Um... Myself or just my channel in general? Uh, both. Let's do both. Um, well, I started my channel for the sake of doing like driving tips and stuff like that on GTA because I was playing GTA. I was doing all these cool driving techniques and stuff like that, which I hadn't really seen many tips for those certain things that I was doing on YouTube, which is why I started my channel. Um, so I kept doing tips and stuff like that, and that slowly turned into cinematics and more artistic stuff. Um, and then I went to uni. Well, I was in uni when I started my channel. And then I decided to specialize in like 3D vehicle art and stuff like that, which is where some people might have seen the Tuners and Outlaws trailer, which is what that sort of sprouted from. So my honors project in uni was to create well, the plan was to make five cars, but I didn't realize how difficult it was to mod cars into GTA and stuff. But um, that's where Tunis and Outlaws sprouted from anyway. I was making cars. And that's mainly what I do now on the channel is I spend most of my day modeling cars, um, turning... I take Rockstar cars mostly, and then I transform them into what um, I think the community would like to see or what they re specifically request me to make. For example, now I'm doing the... Um, the Vapid Ellie, um, I'm turning that into like a drift Mustang sort of thing. And that's mostly what I do now. I spend all day modeling. And even though I haven't posted for like five months, I'm still working on it like every day. And um, that's mostly what my content is. I do a lot of cinematics for those cars as well. Um, and I just do general gameplay and stuff with me commentating over what I've done in terms of designing the cars um, and stuff like that. I think that's pretty much the best way I can describe what I do. Interesting. Yeah. So we, we I, I've got it noted down to talk about the uh, Tuners and Outlaws DLC because that was a what pretty a great segue. What yeah, a great big, segue. Big thing <laughs> that you know, uh, it, it kind of it seemed like that sort of well it did it just took off and blew up on your channel. But I mean, you you had a fairly successful channel before that, uh, yeah. that video. I, I can't remember which one came. Did the um, the, the Need for Speed artistic trailer recreation that you did in GTA. Um, did uh, that come yeah, before that, that or after that? Quite popular, but before that, it was mainly the... Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it was mainly um, the Paul Walker Fast and Furious tribute. I was at, like... I slowly trickled up to, I think it was, like, 25k subs, and that video went viral. Mm. Um, I think I got, like... I think it's on... Five million views now. Could be wrong. Maybe four million. Wow, that's a lot. Um, yeah, your uh, yeah, that was one of the Outlaws videos. Has, that... uh, Two point one, right? Yeah, now. very impressive. Both of those videos I made no money for. <laughs> the, the copyrighted tracks. But, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah typical. But they wouldn't have been the same without the tracks. So yeah, yeah so that the it, it's interesting because for the the Chad Tuners and Outlaws DLC uh, trailer for those who don't know was a fan made trailer that GTA Wise Guy obviously made, and it seemed like it just spread like wildfire and it seemed like everybody that, from that point on when they saw that every time Rockstar would post anything it would be always be like give us Tuners and Outlaws DLC or a lot of people yeah. <laughs> thinking that it was a real yeah. DLC, um, and I was always curious to like how it came about whether it just came about because you wanted to make a DLC thing but it's interesting that. You know, it was part of your uh, your, your project at university. Yeah, uh, and... so um, I was doing games design, which was just like general art and design for games, like building levels, building like mini indie games and stuff like that. 
And for the last year, you got to do like an honors project. So what I decided to do was specialize in vehicle art. And I thought the best way I could do that would be to mod cars into GTA. So model them from scratch or whatever, which I did with the My Batsu Revolution, which is an original completely from scratch car built from the ground up hmm. um, based on the Mitsubishi Lan Lancer Evolution. Yeah. Um, I did set out to do a few more cars. I was going to do like a Mustang from scratch and stuff like that. But, um, didn't realize how tough it was. But it took me about, I think it was like a full year to make the Maibatsu Revolution, learning how to model cars specifically for games, wow. figuring out how the Rockstar game engine works and basically how to import cars once I finished modeling them and stuff like that. And figuring out um, how cars work in games and stuff in terms of like, all the little nitty gritty details in terms of topology. If, if if I say anything that's like any terminology that you don't get, because I've been modeling for so long, I don't know what people do and don't know. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, example, it's all, good. what's a car? Um, <laughs> <that's> what <I laughs> like. <laughs> like modeling topology is quite important. Um, so it's like trying to find out where the player looks, what's the most important places to put detail on cars. Um, if they're going to be high poly or low poly, um, making sure the shading on all those cars, depending on how you do the topology, it looks like good. Um, damage deformation and stuff like that. And um, just like rigging it in terms of animation and stuff like that, how the doors open and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that goes into vehicle modeling that's quite difficult. Um, it and one thing you might not right. necessarily see just from using, you know, playing the game and, and using the cars, you don't realize how much back end work. Yeah, there into, is a lot of yeah. detail that goes into it. And the whole point of me doing that was to make something industry standard, mm. which I do believe I kind of achieved because the whole point was I'm going to put a trailer out and see if people think it's going to be, um, if they believe it's a real thing. And if they do, then I've achieved my goal of making an industry, industry standard vehicle. Because mm, yeah. my backup for in case my YouTube doesn't work out was to go into the games industry as a vehicle artist, preferably for Rockstar. Yeah, and um, that's why I set out to do like started modeling vehicles, and now it, it's good luck. The main thing I do on my channel now. over there. I, I don't. <laughs> as, as, you know, you seen you seen the the pre patch Jester Classic, my friend? You, you, you yeah, know. I was very annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I made a lot of points about it about like the headlights. They had like. The normals with normals on cars and games is like so say you've got a face so say you've got like the exterior of the vehicle um it has like a normal direction so when you look at it um you'll see like light reflect off it and that's how you see like that certain panel of the car for example but everything um the opposite side of it you, you'll just see through it so for example if you go through like a wall like you, you've seen wall glitches in games and stuff mm -hmm. you can see out but people can't see in and that's like some of the Rockstar messed up on the Jester Classic. Like the normals were the wrong way. The topology was bad and messed up. So the shading was screwed over. Um, I think the lights were pretty... I made a point that the lights were really flat. Like they were just like a texture. They buffed them up a bit. They made them 3D. Um, and all the light... And this, I said the spoiler as well. Like it, there's no super spoiler or anything on it. Then he went and put a super spoiler on it. It was pretty interesting to see that all my criticisms of the car they weren't sort of rectified. But hmm. yeah, which is rare. That's very rare. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just actually, it was the first a... time that they didn't release a car that they had in like that you yeah. could see that was yeah. ready to be released. They held it back for the next update, sort of thing. Which yeah, I was shocked that they they didn't release it and then fi yeah. fixed it. You know, in the, in the next DLC. And they added liveries to it as well, which is yeah. pretty interesting. I mean, it, it yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't. I mean, even as a as, as just someone who plays the game you could see there's so many issues with that car it must yeah. have been even worse from a standpoint of knowing how to how cars should be modeled and, and what yeah. they should do to see a car be put into the game like that i think it was either rushed or it's someone new doesn't really know yeah they yeah. was just like trying to get it out there quickly or they weren't particularly good at modeling they didn't check it over properly and check the normals and all that sort of stuff 
So. Were you ever um, contacted by Rockstar when it comes to the Children's Outlaws trailer? Like, ever said, no, did you have any rec- re- you know, recognition, anything, even just a tweet or something, or a like saying, oh, great, great DLC trailer assist. or something? Steve. Yeah, yeah, assist, yeah. On the other side yeah. of it, yeah. The eyes coming to your door. <laughs> on one of their um, community streams, I was in the, uh, excuse me, in the, um, in the Twitch chat, and I was saying something about Tuners and Outlaws, and they said, they, they replied to me saying, um, we hope you'll enjoy that tuna, something like those tuna wheels in Benny's sometime soon, dude. I was like, what? <laughs> so like, I made this whole video about like, oh, the teas and this new tuna's pack and all this stuff, and they've just not said anything since, and there's been no tuna's pack or anything like that. So I think they were just trolling me. They, ac- they acknowledge that. They're such like, a mess. They're <laughs> such a mess. We're going to go down well, this road again, I feel like. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, put it off so for as long as possible. Outlaws, so like, it, it just bring them in so much money to make these cool tuna cars that so many people want, which they definitely buy, and all this like, all the modifications as well. I'm sure like the cars are what make Rockstar most of their money in terms of shark cards and stuff. Well, that's the so, thing uh, that I've kind of been uh, realizing. Uh, the more that I've played uh, the Project Homecoming server on 5M, and and the amount of uh, vehicles that are created over there by all the talented people who make them and mod them in and stuff like that. Yeah. The, the sheer volume of vehicles and the quality of them and all the liveries and modifications and everything that they have on them, it makes you realize kind of how little content we get for regular GTA in comparison to that. And it yeah. it does, you know, it, it's amazing that they've decided to go down the route of all these militaristic vehicles instead of what the, the car culture which is gta as as a base but you know what can you do let's not go down that road i think it's just like <laughs> they know that the kids are going to want the big explosive flying vehicle things, yeah probably that's which true do sell but i'm sure tuna vehicles would sell just as well yeah and i know they've been bringing out a few since the tuners and outlaws trailer like the comet retro the LG retro the jester classic and stuff like that yeah, they seem yeah. to do it major in terms of like a tuners update. Yeah, they seem to try to do things in their own way. Like they've, it's enough to be able to say that they've taken on community feedback. Like the cunning stunts was essentially the racing update, but they didn't do it as a racing update. Yeah. They, they wanted to do it in their own way. Um, but you know, I mean, what has your history been with GTA as a whole? Like, the, did you play the games before GTA Five? Have you always? enjoy gta or has it always been car games and then gta caught your attention how's it been um i've always played gta and i've always been pretty good at racing games um i I used to smash gta 4 like i used to be constantly on that i'd make i had like my own little crew on gta 4 i was pretty good at driving on gta 4 and obviously that transferred over into gta 5 um yeah i've been playing gta since i was like six years old or whatever it is um but yeah my history with it like especially with gta 5 i was chuffed with all the stuff they brought in like apartments like all your your personal vehicles and stuff like that all the new driving mechanics that they had in it with like the double clutch and the perfect launch which was like perfect for me because with my crew that i've got six star crew um like the whole theme of that is like urban car culture and street racing and stuff like that so like drag race is the perfect launch and the the double clutch and stuff like that. There was a lot of skill in, in that. Um drifting as well, that was like quite a niche thing and it was hard to it's hard to drift in GTA. There's no like real actual drifting support, even though they've got the drift hamper, which doesn't drift. <laughs> you don't need to tell us. Really that. Um but yeah, there was a lot of features in GTA five, which is one of the reasons I started my YouTube channel, like I said previously. Um, I knew a lot of things about drifting and drag racing and all that sort of stuff, which is why, I, which is why I'm called GTA Wise Guy. Yeah, because I know stuff about GTA and I could put tips out there. So, but now but I've like it, sort of gone away from doing tips and stuff, mostly because I know how good you are at it. Um, plus, I don't think there are any tips left, are there? Like, yeah, uh, everything. So like the last five tip we got was the single player stop. You remember that, bruv? Oh yeah, you, <laughs> you go into single player and it immediately stops your car. You go back and you you get quicker lap times from it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh. but yeah, like I think my channel was more like rough tips and 
not like specific you're going to get these times in these cars sort of thing it was more this is how you're going to do drag races and this is how you can do drifting here's tips for this and that yeah so, yeah. yeah information on how to I mean, telling people how to do various different things within the game using cars not necessarily yeah. just straight out flat out speed lap time stuff yeah yeah um so which like, is... i'll always recommend your channel if i'm talking about a new car or something i'll hmm. say i'm not going to give specifics on what's the fastest or how fast it's going to go on the track so i'll refer people to your channel that way but i'll always nice. test them out for like drifting and drag racing and stuff like that isn't that refreshing a nice a nice <laughs> youtuber who actually does it properly you know it's, it's, yeah. you're missing out on that youtube money you should have just taken his lap time <laughs> Dream. You're yeah. not told anybody you got it from him. <laughs> Just you're obviously very new to the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, which is your favorite GTA game? I have to ask that to everybody. Um, I think GTA Five before all these stupid updates was my favorite. Mm. Um, but I loved wow. the community and stuff in GTA Four. Just how chilled out and. Like all that, I had a lot of fun playing GTA 4. Probably more fun playing GTA 4, even though I know GTA 5 was a better game. Um, just like the ability to make your own game modes and stuff in GTA 4, like you could turn blips off and stuff like that, and play cops and robbers, and all that sort of stuff. You don't have that freedom in GTA 5, even though there's more game modes and stuff. I just don't have the ability to make as many fun and exciting modes. I don't think. Yeah, GTA 4 hmm. had GTA 4 online. We had, had had some great experience. We've even gone back to it for some racing every now and then, and it's always it's always good fun. It's yeah, just yeah. A, it's just still a good game. I think in GTA Four as well, you go up to someone, you beat your horn, you just go for a go for a drive. In GTA Five, you go up to someone, beat your horn, they throw a sticky bomb at you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not a sticky bomb anymore. It's you know a yeah. rocket launcher, and then they call in their broomstick, and then they you know <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is That's your take on all anymore. these newer vehicles, like the Oppressive Mark II and the Deluxe, or the flying bikes and rocket cars and flying cars? What's your What's your feelings on all of that stuff? It's a load of shite, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just ruined it. Like I'll 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 go into GTA Online, I'll get me Banshee, I'll just go for a drive or something, and I'll just blow up randomly, and then I'll see a flying bike just go past. It's just it's just ruined <laughs> it, really. Uh, uh... But yeah, there's not much if, else to say than that. It's just ruined it, I think. Yeah, uh, I I think we all agree on that. Yeah. That the mil increased militarization of GTA Online has brought Hey, Robin, its welcome own to the bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to the Choking Hazard podcast. This is all well, we yeah. talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I think it's very pay to win as well. Because, like, yeah, you can grind for hours and hours. But if someone calls in their jet right next to them and starts strafing on me to try and kill me i'm not going to take them out like they're going to avoid all my homing missiles if i get a sniper out i don't have explosive bullets because they haven't paid like five million for a bunker and then three million for a, <laughs> yeah all the upgrades that you need right. to get it pay walls pay walls everywhere yeah <laughs> and then um i can't call in a hydra or whatever it is to go and take him out i've got to go to the fort zancudo base which i'll probably die about a million times getting there i'll kill him and then he'll just get his jet back straight away <laughs> so yeah, the game's great now. <laughs> balanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah balanced. Really like balanced excellent game. <laughs> um, so you said that you were like you love racing in GTA Four, and mostly you've been doing your car modeling for GTA Five, right? Yeah. Like, if the physics are clearly a lot different between the two games, would that like transfer uh, translate to a different model type for GTA Four rather than GTA Five, um, accounting for the physics? In terms of modeling them, it would be to do with the collisions on the car. So, like, each car has invisible collisions. It doesn't just use the collisions from how the car's modeled. It's very, like, low-poly collision boxes, whereas, say, like, a car's, like, the LG is, like, 120,000 tries, which is how many triangles the car's made up of oh. um, in terms of modeling. But the collision box would probably only be, like, 20 tries or something like that so it's really really low um yeah that, in terms i'm of guessing that's GTA... why sort of 
body panels can clip through the the floors or yeah. there's some cars Not that like have crash yeah, really you can crash them where there's is. nothing there and stuff like that yeah like yeah the the ferocious 112 on the 5m server is just a box around it it's not perfectly like it's not like the like the frankenstanger i guess not the frankenstanger is like some kind of like excellent modeling thing <laughs> but you know like it's just a box around the car it doesn't actually clip on the rear wheels yeah. or anything so it's similar uh, in terms of the difference between gta 4 and gta 5 um i, I don't really know how the collision boundaries work in gta 4 um but i know when from i when i've been modeling stuff um there's weights to the collision box itself which is actually on the model and there's also in the handling file i think it's a handling file or the vehicle meta file or whatever it's called um there's weights to the collisions there as well so you can choose how heavy the collision boxes are through the through the data or you can do it physically on the when you're importing it through a program called Zed Modeler, um, and that can affect how the car handles and stuff like that. But specifically, how they affect the car, I'm not too sure. I've not really experimented with it much. Hmm. I'm, sure. Sure, I, I'm sure I could get the answer to that question. I know that uh, Thunder Smacker makes uh, vehicles for GTA 4, and I've uh, people have converted his vehicles to GTA 5. So, uh, yeah. If if I had enough time to find out the answer to that question, <laughs> I, I, I would. Yeah, I just, I just don't know the specifics on um, collisions and stuff. But I have seen collision boxes, and I know how they affect, um, like the tire rubbing thing. That will be when um, the collision box is too low on the car, and the wheel collisions will run into. I think it's the center point of the wheel collision when it goes through the collision box on the car. That's when you get that curb. Like when you drive over the curb effect, when oh, they yeah, the, the, like stancing a car sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, when you kind of think about it and and go into it and delve deeper into it, you do realize how much, sort of how complex these things are. And I, I guess it, it's easy for us to complain about GTA and the direction it goes and all that kind of stuff. But I've always tried to maintain at least sort of some level of the vehicles themselves that are created, the work that's done from you know, the artists, the modelers, the people who are actually working on the ground level of GTA Online. They're doing some great work to make these great vehicles. It's just that they're implemented in a way that we don't necessarily like. But yeah. there's still a lot of work that goes into you know everything that they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when... Um, I know it's a different game, but from talking to the devs at um, <coughs> Need for Speed, um, the process for making a car from scratch without any like mod pieces and stuff is a hundred days for yeah. one car, that's and crazy. that's with like a full team working on it, sort of thing. Wow! So, yeah, it's insane. That's crazy. Like if much. I'm doing a car from scratch, it took me like a year. But to be fair, it was my first one, <sighs> um, and with the Ellie now, I've pretty much changed everything, but like the exterior so i've changed the engine bay i've changed the interior i've changed um like i've put a wire body on it and stuff like that i've changed the front bumper and i've done loads of other mod pieces for it but that's taken like three months mm. altogether like non-stop wow. like nine to five working on it that's crazy so when you see something like was it the escort or what some cars have uh tires that are like fucked up sorry for lack of a better word but like they'll be backwards they'll be facing the wrong way is that something that you can kind of feel the pain of the developer or the designer be like damn it we missed that or is that something that you should pay attention to while you're making it? that was the retinue by the way oh one yeah the retinue was yeah. smaller than the other one okay yeah yeah oh yeah. uh, well like one side was smaller than the other wasn't it the left yeah. front yeah. wheel yeah. was like thinner the tire was thinner than the, the one on the weird. right oh uh, yeah well that's um that's a pretty easy thing to spot. I'd be surprised that they actually manage that. Because when oh, you're yeah, in it, um, you have the wheel, and you have you only have one wheel on the car when you're modeling it, and it just mm. um, sort of duplicates it around the car. Ah, oh, that's why so, the X80 Proto's um, rear wheels they they have the um, the the tread facing the wrong way because it's the same. That's right. That's also just, right. yeah, yeah. That's that's the ah. problem as well. Like I've wanted to do like um, um, I think the some cars that you can have 
a front wheel and it'll duplicate it to the other side on the on the front and you can also have a separate back wheel which will duplicate it to the other side on the back but generally most cars only use one wheel mm. um hmm. but what each wheel has a collision boundary as well and the size of that wheel is determined by the collision width so you can see like a, a cylindrical box and you can just like type in how wide you want that to be so i'm okay. surprised that they didn't notice that you generally just make it as wide as like where the rim comes out to on the wheel yeah yeah so. it, it, it's it's amazing what they can let slip through <laughs> sometimes so how did they, they've obviously so just how did they rushed it, it. <laughs> they've, been, they've, they've had a deadline they've had to like rush it out sort of thing yeah um hmm. so the um the the need for speed uh, trailer recreation that you did in the Rockstar editor. Yeah, it, it felt like that was like one of the very, one of the earlier things to come out of the Rockstar editor that was like a full production quality thing. Um, yeah. Where did that come from? Like, why did you decide to do that? Where did that whole um, idea? Well, start? I was just excited for Need for Speed, and I was starting to get pretty decent at the Rockstar editor. Um, I was excited that Need for Speed was going back to an urban car culture, like nighttime underground scene sort of thing um so we just got a few mates together and said yeah let's try and recreate this so obviously it was a i wasn't doing it on pc single player at that point i was just like getting guys to um i know i was doing it on pc but i wasn't using mods sort of thing um and i even had one guy like while we were recording it there was a guy like standing around the corner and he was recording it himself while I was doing the driving, because I was the only one that could drive this certain bit to do like the drift or whatever. Yeah. And um, he had to send me the clip afterwards. But um, the reason I'd done that um, was just like, it was just like a passion project. Yeah. Um, it didn't actually take that long. It took me, I think the most time was spent recording. It was like eight hours recording and six hours editing sort of thing. Yeah. So videos like that don't take too long. It's the um, vehicle modeling and stuff yeah. that takes yeah, the most I can time. Imagine. Interesting. Uh, how how uh, how was your feelings about the game when you eventually got it after all this excitement and stuff? Um, <laughs> it was good to begin with, but there was just so much more potential with it, and I think the um, took a step backwards with payback as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I've played payback hopefully... for a little while, and it was just like the hand. It's just the handling's not there. Like it's, I don't know. It's just not enjoyable. Yeah, the... The, I don't mind the arcade handling style. Like, the people that want it to be realistic, I don't like that. Like, it's an arcade game. Well, there's no, a balance that you can find between yeah, I think, racing and Need for Speed. Yeah, I don't think the model, the GTA. handling model's good. Like, very good. Um, it's okay. But there's a lot that can be done to it. But I still think it should stay arcade, but the models should be improved for it. Um, and I know the devs are listening to the community now. And they do a lot of stuff. Well, EA are quite good now with the whole game changes, like, um, like program that they got going. Like they'll fly us out to the studio and they'll they'll hear what we have to say and stuff. So hopefully they listen this time and um, <laughs> make some of good. But yeah, I was disappointed with Need for Speed 2015, but it was promising. Yeah, it's <laughs> always that it seems like games in general these days. We just yeah. wish it was better. And it was always, always a big lot of hype, and then it just doesn't, uh, just doesn't turn yeah, into what we right. expect. Oh, there's a picture of the uh, MB Hammer just put a picture of the retinue in the chalk chat, with its uh, mm -hmm. differently sized front tire width. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting how they could do that. What about the picture of Doctor Phil with tattoos? Oh, that's <laughs> weird. Because that. normally they'd. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that'll be the collision side. So it'll be the same wheel that's like model that's repeated on the other side, but the the width of the collision, they're all separate, and yeah. they would have just made that the wrong size. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, the the tread uh, the tread is the opposite way around on that as well. I think that must just be the case for all cars if they're using one yeah, wheel. A lot of them. And you just don't yeah, see yeah, it the, most the of the time. The tread's always the wrong way because yeah. it's not. Um... Wait, I'm trying to think about this properly. It's not mirrored. It's rotated 180 degrees. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and they've just they, they, they you never see it, so they don't really think that there's any point yeah. in modeling separate wheels for it because most cars you're not going to see the tread on the tire. But some cars like the yeah. X80, it's very visible. 
It's one of those things where as soon as you notice it, you can't not notice it. Yeah, what they could do though is just have. I know it's just an extra step that they have to do, but it's have the tires separate from the wheel. So rotate the wheel and just mirror the tires. I think mm. it yeah. would be a way that they could do that, but. That's That's whether they've got the time to well, do why, so. yeah. why do that that just cuts <laughs> yeah. into their time making money like <laughs> <laughs> making billions oh, here we go again no 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 no, 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 no. bring it back down, <laughs> bring it back down. New topic. it's a legitimate criticism though because yeah. if they are putting out these products that are technically faulty and aren't exactly what people want and they may be rush jobs they're obviously doing it to make more money which is fine which is fine yeah. because they're a company and they exist to make money but still you kind of expect a better final product for the amount of profit that they make yeah. Yeah, every year. So what's your uh, sort of current status when it comes to YouTube or work or um, um, university or whatever you're doing now in life? Like, Well, I do YouTube full time. <laughs> You'd be shocked to believe. <laughs> I haven't uploaded in like, I think it's like three, four months maybe. Six Man, months. You must be uh, getting a lot four. of back pay from that, uh, that ad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, I went through it. Have you heard of YouTuber Burnout? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I sort of like sp- suffered from it mm-hmm. recently. Like after um, I done, I spent like two months working on the Sentinel custom. I don't know if you've seen the video or the car itself. Mm-hmm. Um, spent like two months working on that, doing a lot of like new stuff, like doing engine modifications and stuff. I was really proud of it. And um, after like a big break, sometimes my um, the the YouTube algorithm favors like when I have big breaks, especially of like tuners and outlaws and some other big projects like the Jim Carner drifting one. Um, they got they blew up after like a long break. Yeah, and I thought that maybe that the YouTube algorithm has recognized my channel as being one of those big break channels, and they'll they know that it's sort of like I'm working on a big project and it should be boosted sort of mm. thing yeah he's back um, like that kind of thing yeah. yeah and then um i was doing other car mod videos um i was doing them like every month but they'd get like 150k views to 200k or something like that so i was pretty chuffed about that so i carried on working spent a little longer on the sentinel and um when i put that out it only got like 30k views and i was like right two months for 30k views isn't really that good so that was when I set up my Patreon as well for people to get insight into the development of the mods to get like parts on the cars when it comes out as well. Um, and when I was, so I thought that would be, help me like financially be more stable and yeah. put out content, even if the views don't get too high sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's always a good idea to, in this business of YouTube now to diversify any like yeah, yeah that, that, that algorithm has no interest in putting food on your table no, it really like, doesn't <laughs> the thing is like i have the ability to post every day just doing like i don't know like just playing gta customizing cars and doing races or whatever and i wanted to prove to people that i could do that so after i posted the sentinel video i done like a video every day for a week and i was and a, that was when like the gesture and stuff was coming out um and I was getting like tons of views on those videos, like the Jester Classic one, I think got 250K. The one after that got 120K. And then at the end of the week, I was just like really demotivated. I was like, I've spent two months doing what I love to make this car just to be like not rewarded for it. And then spend very little time doing these short form videos, yeah, which just get me tons of views, which I don't particularly enjoy making, which are easier to make. And then... It just like really demotivated me and I was just like, I was creatively burnt out. I was annoyed, really demotivated. And I spent like two months after that, just like struggling to be able to get up in the morning and do work. And, um, but now I've like, I've said to myself, right, I'm going to get up at this time. I'm going to do it for so-and-so hours and I'm going to make this work sort of thing. So there has been a big delay between videos, but once the LE's out, Hopefully, I'll be able to get them um, more consistently coming out and hopefully try and make it work with the algorithm rather than um, posting irregularly sort of thing. And also have the Patreon to support me. I've got it on per project now, so it's not... The whole reason I made my Patreon was to make it sustainable, but because it's per project, 
Um, it's kind of like iffy because I've not taken a payment yet until I post the Elliot. So it's going to be every time I post a project, I'll yeah. take payment sort of thing. But I mean, I need makes... to prove first that I can post at least monthly before I start taking um, monthly payment sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's interesting, yeah. you know, what you uh, what you say because I've had the, almost exactly the same uh experience over the last few weeks really yeah. very very recently uh, we talked about it in the last pod was it the last podcast i'm pretty sure it was yeah. right i watched Probably. most of the last podcast yeah um whoa you what whoa slow we down we have a guest that actually watched an episode whoa. we have a guest that watched an episode everybody best <laughs> guess. <It was> amazing <laughs> it was very relatable though and um i only just recently seen video i thought it was like i thought it was like just me just like being burnt out and i'm like Maybe I'm just, I don't know. It was just like weird. Like I, I know um, Jack Septicai posted a video on it because he recently found himself really burnt out. And it was, um, there was some other YouTubers that had come out about it. And it was, it's quite weird because it's quite a new thing for like people to be creatively burnt out. And yeah. It's weird because you're doing what you love for a job. And especially with yeah. what happened in terms of posting all the other videos and knowing I could make a lot more money doing a lot less work. It was kind of demotivating. Yeah, absolutely. I know exactly. I mean, and, and, and this is something that that can be experienced from the very small scale to the very big scale. You know, yeah. I could play a video game that I love on stream, and you know, twenty people hang out. I do the same race in GTA again and again and again, and you know, eighty, one hundred views. You know, is very possible. So, but yeah, you know, that's and that's with everything. Everything you know, yeah, things you true. love. Uh, I for one, I, I like running. Like I, I'm, I like to go out and run. But there are weeks where I'm just like, I just don't feel like doing this. This is something that I don't want to get out of here and do. I don't want to go out and do everything. Yeah. And that's why they say everything in moderation. Anything that you do can be overdone. And yes. it's a good thing that you've taken this time away from the community, not completely detached from the community, but like you're not putting that pressure on yourself that you have to put yeah. content out just to satisfy people that are following you. And anybody that truly cares about what you're doing will totally understand the, the lapse in time. So, yeah. Is, well, I noticed um, a lot of like my, I thought like I was going to lose a lot of Patreon like members. But, um, like a, a couple of people dropped out, but most of them have stayed and they're waiting out for this sort of project to be finished, I think, which I'm very grateful for. It's just yeah. annoying that I haven't been able to sort of post onto YouTube. Like I could do little videos, just um, like I said, just like building a car or something on GTA. But I just wouldn't enjoy doing that. So that's it. It's always trying to find that balance between the things that are gonna continue to make you successful and the things that you enjoy doing and the reason that you do it in the first place. And it's, yeah. it is difficult to manage that, to balance that, and to balance everything when you, you know the full-time youtube or streaming or whatever it is that you do it's just natural yeah, Aditi doesn't like have that problem he just goes to job. work and, and and gets paid gets the big dollar dollar yeah. um doing what you love for a job is quite a weird thing to try and figure out because not at least i've not seen that many people like ex though i don't know how to how to word it properly but like just playing games and like doing it for a living it's it's weird trying to realize that it's your job which you've got to do and just doing it purely out of passion when you know you've you've got to pay the bills sort of thing yeah yeah it's 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 that transition from do doing it in your spare time and because you really enjoy it and then it come, becomes a thing that you start supporting yourself with and then it's well, like you're required to do it you yeah. change yeah. you can do it whenever you want to you are required to do that yeah you don't do it because you, you want to do it. Or you, you do starve it. to death and get evicted and you know. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. Something that Hopefully you might you want to do death before you get evicted, but you know. <laughs> like you try to do something that may take ten, fifteen hours and you'd spend a couple of days on it in the past or whatever and just in your spare time and then it comes to a point where you can't do that. Like you can't take that time to do something like that if it's not going to give you the payback for doing it. And it's again yeah. that balance is difficult to to manage. But yeah, it's definitely. good that you're sort of back back on the on the the upward trend to getting things sorted at least. Yeah, 
So I'm like, like I said, I've, um, some of that I've worked on a lot, especially is self-discipline. I was getting up at regular times, going to bed at regular times and making sure that you stick to a schedule sort of thing. So like I said, I've been... to like karate class. I hear that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I, I, I work nine to five, like wax on, wax on off. <laughs> but something that I do a lot when I was like working on YouTube nonstop after finishing uni was I was just working nonstop. Like I wouldn't give myself breaks, and that was yeah, quite never uh, healthy. Hard to do as well. Yeah, not healthy. Yeah. Um, so last week we were talking about something in particular, and I was wondering if you had any experiences of this, namely getting your uh, content, let's say, used by Borrow. other other people, but borrowed. <laughs> yeah, borrowed. Um, yeah. <laughs> so not insane. Tuners and Outlaws, people make a lot more money off it than I did when I'd spent like over a year doing it. Um, <laughs> ADT's angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can't take it. Yeah, like, fair enough, they, they give exposure to it. And um, that's all great. And I want Rockstar to see it and stuff like that. But um, knowing that you, when I, it was when I finished uni that I posted it and I was like, right, I need to make a living doing this now. And it, um, seeing other people make tons of money off it was really annoying. Yeah. Uh, especially as well when <laughs> they make more content than me on it than out. Like when it was something that I'd come up with sort of thing. Um, that was pretty annoying. But I, th I think I mentioned to you, um, I think it was in your Twitter mention, like I replied to you on Twitter yeah. about, um, which was why you told me to come on the podcast sort of thing. But um, there was a, Another big YouTuber who now has a Lambo and is living the uh, the higher life sort of thing after stealing my content. <laughs> I, I, that was from just that video, boy. It just says what those sort of people are like. Like to be fair, he doesn't seem too bad now. He's doing all of his own original content, but it was um typical gamer. Um, I'd done like a video on like the double clutch and mid jabs, speed boost, whatever you want to call it, in a banshee, like on a specific runway at the airport, and it was like. I'd structured it a certain way, saying this is how you do the perfect launch, and this is how, this is when you're supposed to hit so and so buttons and all this sort of stuff. And it, <laughs> he made the video like exactly a month later, in the exact same place in the exact same car with the exact same structure <laughs> that I had on my video. And I was too small at the time, like even if I called him out, no one was going to notice. But Feels it's just bad. annoying. Like that's happened like quite a few times. And obviously there's people as well that just sort of steal your ideas and or literally just re-blurt them out on their own channel and they'll make tons of money from it and get tons of views. It's funny, that's... Uh, uh, it's, like, uh, it's interesting. Yours drives a, a Lamborghini, Bruff's drives a McLaren. I wonder when I get big and someone steals all my stuff, maybe he'll drive a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he'll get big enough off of me to drive a Ferrari. <laughs> You've actually made me remember... Um, I'm pretty sure exactly the same thing happened to me from exactly the same person. <laughs> oh, no surprise. Uh, do, do, do you guys what? remember the uh, the 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 perfect start, like the boost, the extra boost start that you could get in GTA races? Yeah, I mean, you still can't. You hold the yeah. yeah, hold the accelerator during the whole phase, and then you let it go, and it gives you a like bit more of a boost at the start. Yeah, revs up the engine. I mean, I remember making a video about that, and then uh, yeah, about a month later, I saw a video from I'm pretty sure exactly the same person that was basically doing exactly the same thing that I said. Uh, it's in exactly the same format, in the same way, and and again, I was exactly the same as you, far, far too yeah. small at that point. You know, I was kind of happy that it, it had been spread, but I don't think there was any credit or anything like that. But I, yeah. I um, there was definitely no credit to me. Or no, like but yeah, it was. I'm sure it was the same person. I kind of want to try and find it now. But um, yeah, interesting, interesting uh, thing. This whole YouTube business. Yeah. Interesting well, thing. Yeah, very interesting. That's exactly the word I would use. <laughs> very interesting. Um, I remember. Have you ever seen that? that... You can go you ahead. Have seen that little cartoon? You know? Okay, we're all gonna talk. You go, wise guy. You okay. say your thing. Say your piece. Sorry. <laughs> um, like, I remember I fell out with Mr. Boss for the win for a long time, um, and I did make up with him. And I was like, right, whatever. It's a necessary evil that I just have to put up with. Um, but 
I remember one time I made like a it was when like what's it? I can't remember, I can't remember what the car's called it's the um, I think it's the car that's based off the McLaren P1 T20 the T20 the T20 and there was like a promotional picture by Rockstar it's, it's quite a little thing but it's quite annoying it shows you what these people are like but the 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 picture of the car that Rockstar put out it was like a, a grit the car was green or whatever and I'd just gone in Photoshop and I've made it purple to make it quite interesting, something different, what the car looked like in a different color. And I was using that as my thumbnail. And then he, he contacted me saying, can I use it? And I was like, no, I I spent time making this. I'm not for you to make money off it sort of thing. And, <laughs> and he told him no. He went, he went and found a guy to Photoshop the image, make the car purple, <laughs> and then put that um, thumbnail <laughs> on his video. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> So stupid. Well, well, if I can't use your purple Photoshop, I'll make my own <laughs> yeah. purple Photoshop. Oh my god, like, uh, it's so dumb. We well, will, uh, we will have some follow up. Like by it. the way, we do have a last episode, episode follow up uh, section of the podcast, and, and okay. we can we can follow up on what happened <laughs> after the after the events of last episode. But uh, that is just that is just insane. Like, yeah. why couldn't he have made it a different color? Like even if he's gonna go to the <laughs> trouble to get it made, really what's wrong with orange? I know it's gonna get tons of views, so I'm just gonna post it. <laughs> oh um, my exactly the same. God. That's just that. Yeah, you're right. It's a little thing, but it does just show how, what they're like. These these bigger yeah. YouTubers, they're just maybe they're just so devoid of all creativity that they can't yeah. have a spare thought for themselves. And they just have Pretty to go much. with whatever's. It's not there. that they're devoid of creativity. It's just that they they de- they have no motivation to use it. Why? Why? When I can make my car purple and get more views than you, and you know, buy uh, the thing in real life, you know. Yeah. Why do I? Why do I need creativity? <laughs> Creativity's overrated. Yeah, fair. I'm point. on Mr. Boss for the win side. <laughs> 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 And this will be Sugar Free Noss's final episode of the Choking Hazard podcast, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming on. Uh, yeah. And then he'll start his own Choking Hazard podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, the no morals but, version. Uh, <laughs> what I was trying to say was, like, have you ever seen that little cartoon image of the two guys and the one guy comes up to him and goes, hey, look, uh, I just made this. And he takes it. And then the guy walks away. He's just standing there for a second looking at it. And he goes, I made this. And, the, like, yeah. that's exactly what I feel like is yeah. going on here it's they see something they take it and they're like i made this this is mine now so <laughs> yeah. i'm just gonna use this i got a lot it's of ridiculous. messages um, i think it was like three weeks ago or something like that somewhere around there a month ago um and i just couldn't be bothered it was saying that mr boss for the win is um he's made a video talking about tuners and outlaws claiming that um he he come up with it sort of thing and I was just like, I was, I just couldn't be bothered to even look it up because like, yeah, it's probably you're just true. like, I'm going. No, I got it's from yeah. people as well, but like, I didn't even bother to go on the video because like, they're just gonna do it all the time, and like, I'm not gonna get any exposure from it if I call him out and he puts my name in the in the description sort of thing. I was like, oh, whatever. Yeah, so stupid. Can't be bothered with it anymore. Yeah, you have to pick your battles sometimes. Yeah. Um. So, so what? So, what's your favorite vehicle in GTA? Give me. There we go. Well, we didn't ask that question. It's on the list. <laughs> I thought I wrote. I went, yeah, I was trying to look for. I, I knew that yeah, I'd written something down. else down. And yeah. Come oh, there on, it is. Yeah. Okay. Now I see. It. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Anyway, what's your favorite uh, vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> It'll have to be the Banshee. The regular one or the nine hundred R? Uh, the nine hundred R now, but yeah, just the Banshee in general. I've always What's, used it. I've always. What about it. the? What about your vehicles that you've made? What a. Uh, um, your favorite. I like the Revolution, but looking back on it, it's not as polished as it could be. It's not very good, topologically and stuff like that. But um, probably, um, I like the Shafter. I don't like the Shafter V12 um, with a wide body on it. Um, and they had like six exhausts coming out of either side of the fenders. That Only roll back six? The <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have had eight or twelve. <laughs> um, but also the uh, I don't like a I turned the Ruiner into like a two forty SX 
S13 style car. I uh, spent a lot of time on that. I quite like that. But probably the Ellie now is um, the one that I like the most. I've done tons of interior stuff for it. Made my own interior from scratch sort of thing. Um, it's got tons of engine customization to it. So I'm quite excited to release it. It's probably the best one that I've done so far. So yeah. Okay, we'll keep you... everyone keep an eye out for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, subscribe. Subscribe. I'll post it in the um, choke chat. One sec. And do you think, like, do you see any potential for this maybe to evolve into a career in actual car modeling? Um, Is that something you'd be interested in if that was an opportunity that came up? Well, my backup plan, in case YouTube doesn't work out, whatever, is to go into vehicle modeling for Rockstar Games. But one of the things that I put into my Patreon as well is saying, like, um, the reason that I'm doing the Patreon, et cetera, et cetera, is because I don't want to work for Rockstar because I can work on my own terms. I can build what I want sort of thing because they could just ask me to model a plane or a boat or some crappy car that I don't want to do. Whereas yeah. working for myself now, I can just build the stuff that the community wants to see specifically and the stuff yeah. that I want to make as well. So You're the Speaking people's freelancer. The... <laughs> Speaking of the community, are you, are you like... In you know, do you you check out other ve people's vehicle mods on GTA Five mods? Uh, um, often? Mm. Not a lot, but um, I'm in the Vanilla Works Discord. There's some yeah, very talented that. guys in there. They are very talented. We uh, work them. with them. We work with them a lot on the Five uh, M server. Yeah, but I, uh, a few of them don't like me because <laughs> the fact that I monetize yeah. what I do. Mm. Um, but fair enough, whatever. Um, some very talented guys in there. Um, a few of them helped me out quite a bit. Um, a guy called Bob Three Two Two. Um, he's helped yes, me. Yes, the more. master <laughs> of adding doors and removing doors. Yeah, he's, he helped me out. You, a lot you need a there. door gone? I got your man, <laughs> Bob Three Three Two. He he's... helped me out um, when I was like writing the code and stuff for making add-on vehicles and stuff like that. But and they come up with a lot of stuff in there. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of great guys over there. Good quality and a lot as well. Great creators. It's but, um, uh, generally like. Sometimes those guys will um, say if I've got an idea for a car that I want to do. Say I want to do a wide body, I don't know, Ferrari GT. They'll say, oh, this guy's already done it. So you can't do it. They don't say, so you can't do it. It's like sort of insinuating that I shouldn't be able to do that because someone's already made it. Whereas like I'd like to give it a shot and see what I can do with it sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with, with that, you know, like... Yeah, you should get you could get your own shot because you've you've certainly got your own style for making yeah. vehicles and liveries that uh, I would say that that Vanilla Works does not. So yeah. Hmm. So, so you're trying to say that they kind of call dibs on ideas. Sometimes, like... yeah. A lot of them are quite accepting about it. Um, like for example, I'm trying to think, um, like the. I was going to, one of the goals on my Patreon was to make a Supra from scratch. Um, but they are obviously already done that. They made, they brought the Jester out. Um, so I've changed that now to a 350Z. Hopefully they don't bring that out while I'm modeling. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I was going to make that and they were saying like, oh, this guy's already done it. And to be, it was a really good model. Um, I think they called it the Sapphire. Um, and the guy who made it was really talented, but I was like, I still want to give it a shot. Um, and there was uh, the Flash GT as well. Um, I want, wanted to make that stock. And the same guy was... He wasn't the one calling me out sort of thing. But, um, he was also making mm. the a stock version of the Flash. And I, I was going to do it anyway. Because um, I wanted to give it a shot myself. But he, he made the pretty good version of it. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do it now. Because yeah. well, he's, I mean, he's done a good job of it. I could do it. but And I, it, I wouldn't let it stop me sort of thing. But... Um, yeah. I was still going to model the Super anyway, but Rockstar brought it out. But some of them will call me out and say, you can't model this because so-and-so so has already done it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you want to model hmm. the, a similar car, you both are up on GTA 5 mods. You get to choose which one. Yeah, you that, that's the thing. Yeah. It's just more variety to choose from. Yeah. But some people just get salty about it, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's been uh, uh, very, very... Uh very intriguing to hear about this side of things and the whole things going on, on you know what when it comes to the the specifics of modeling all this kind of stuff 
It yeah. seems like so much effort it goes into all this. Well, if there's anything specifically that you want to know, just go ahead and ask. But... <laughs> well, we were talking about vanilla works. Can I ask you about LOD models for the memes? Because if I don't, <laughs> if, if I don't, they'll they'll be upset with me. Can I, yeah. can I ask? That's um, a big point on my cars. So LODs for anyone that doesn't know. Yeah, tell everyone what are, they are. Are levels of detail on on cars or any objects in in GTA or any game. So when you get further away from a car, it will reduce the uh, the detail on the car. Mm -hmm. It will reduce like obviously for better performance and stuff like that on your game. Um, so what I do a lot of the time because because I'll take a car from GTA. Um, when you model stuff, you model it in quads. And when you pull it from the game, it's already been compressed into triangles, which makes them hard to edit and stuff like that. So what you've either got to do is quadrify it, which there's some tools for doing that automatically, but it will get all the wrong lines and stuff. So you've got to go in and correct it all yourself, which can take a long time. So what I do is, and when you're making LODs, you've got to be able to remove certain elements of detail which is really hard when it's in tries you've got to like select edges individually rather than selecting whole lines and it's just really difficult and time consuming to do um so what i do with my cars is i just model the highest L um the highest level of detail and that'll just be the one that i import so obviously it's bad perf for performance in the game when Say if you're really far away from the car, it's still got the highest level of detail. So it's not going to be good for performance on your game. Um, but the whole purpose of my mods isn't for performance. It's just more so for people to check them out and say like, yeah, Rockstar could do this. Maybe um, forward this over to Rockstar. It's a possibility that you could see this car in game. I've modeled them into... Uh, I do put a lot of detail into them and make sure that they function at the highest LOD in game, um, but I don't, I don't make all the other LODs because it is time consuming, and the whole purpose of them is to say this is what it could look like. It's not to get it out there for people to have like the best performance of the game when they put it in, sort of thing. Now I know that some people would love that, and they would like say if it was a, all my cars on a 5M server, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> Because they're all yeah, the highest. That that is, and, and many people have asked us, uh, you know, uh, about your cars on our 5M server. And there you go. There's everybody's yeah. answer. You won't be able to put them in because it would be bad. Your, for your cars are for a different purpose. That's It's more that's, for the artistic yeah. visuals. This is what it would look like. Yeah. And I'd, I want to try and get out as much as I can. And it already takes enough time for me to produce what I do. Even though I do put a lot of detail into specifics and little nooks and crannies on the cars. Just making those extra levels of detail takes a lot longer if I'm going to do them properly. I did do it for the um, the Sentinel, um, the last car that I've done, um, and it did take a while, which is why I don't... If I was going to do a car from scratch and I had full control of the model, it's not triangulated, like pulling it from GTA, I would be able to work with it, reduce the, the poly count and stuff, and push it in without too much trouble. But because I pull the cars from the game, it is quite difficult. And I know a lot of the vanilla works guys, they don't I'm not trying to discredit the work, but they don't do a full job of it. It does work performance wise, but I know what a lot of them do is they take the car, they have the highest level of detail version, they'll have the second low the, there's five five or six levels, I think. And the next level will just be the exact copy of the car. And then the next four levels will be the original version of the car without all the stuff that they've done to it. So you won't really see all their stuff on it if it gets a bit further away. Um, it's just the original stock version of the car, which is a shortcut way to get around it and keep performance there, but it's not the uh, it's not how Rockstar would do it, for example. Yeah. And I mean, and that's not the way all of their vehicles are done. Uh, yeah, you know, for the record, yeah, not yeah. all of them, but uh, you know, a lot of the ones that they they are. Yeah, you know, I, I think they've so got I, I kind probably of could, different. I probably but... could do that. Just have like the original version of the car, but it's just. I'm a bit OCD when it comes to yeah. having it. Well, I, with Vanilla Works, I, I think from what I've observed, at least, there's kind of like different levels of project, like 
uh, status. Like you have your yeah. fully your fully done vehicles with full LOD models, and then you've got kind of the we're working on it. It's you know it's almost done, and then you've got the new things which you know may not have LOD models. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a full uh, you know helping of work statuses. Yeah, with yeah. Them. So I have a question about that then. So wait, the the highest level of detail. Your vehicles obviously have that. You know, they're just the the top level. Yeah. It, it, I'm assuming you know if you put them as a mod into the game, and you drive them around yourself, that's not really going to be um, that's not really going to be affecting performance because it's it would already yeah. be at that highest level of detail. Yeah, I'm always going to see it that highest yeah. level. So it's if, only uh, when like you say see... you had 29 other people. And, and they were a little bit distance apart, but then they've yeah, all got the highest level of detail. That's when yeah. it starts to affect things. Mm -hmm. That would be that'd be quite bad. Yeah, oh, um, that's interesting. I didn't know anything about that. Interesting, very interesting. So, uh, well, yeah, like it's just mostly for the purpose of showing them off, and the, the main part of it is um, obviously showing it off in my videos, sort of thing. People yeah. can still download them and try them out, but I don't specifically recommend having all the cars on screen at once, sort of thing, because it won't be good for performance yeah interesting and i don't really expect people to unless it was specifically making like a 5m server i could i would have to go through and make all the lod's for the cars and stuff cool but is it, what did you say that you made all the lod's for the sentinel the sentinel the sentinel classic okay so um, you do have one car that has, has yeah all the, the there is one car of all the okay. lod's cool um but some of it is a bit messy because I've just jumped, there's like a tool in 3ds Max, which, which is what I use to model. So all the triangulated bits that are pulled from the game, I had to like just use a tool to like break it all down. It's a bit messy, but all the stuff that I modeled from scratch, I could like make to the lower LOD sort of thing. Mm. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. So should we, uh, should we start moving it on to our regular segments at this point? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. It was All a right. nice, a little over, a little over an hour of a lot of great information. And yeah, it was, this has been, uh, <laughs> this has been kind of on the level of um, the Joshua Moves podcast, yeah, where I was we just, say, like, I yeah. was just thinking that. Yeah. So I guarantee you, nobody's watched this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's always <laughs> the one where it's the most interesting, the most in informative, and we learn the most stuff. Nobody watches. Nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. Nobody watches Joshua Moves one. It could like send you to sleep. So it's just. Fair enough. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll we'll open up the phone bank for anyone who wants to ask any questions for uh, for for any of us, GTA Wise Guy specifically, any of us specifically, or all of us together. Get in the phone bank on Discord, and uh, we'll take your questions later on. Um, but before we before we do all that, we got some gaming news to talk about. First of all, always got to do a bit of bit of gaming news in the segments this time. And uh, are we talking about your week first, or are we? Nah, we don't need to do that. that. We don't. Everybody no, knows. I'm. I'm on stream. This is stream time. eleven out well, of then... in eight days, and and I've been streaming for a week, and it's been fun, and I played Red Dead Redemption, and that's been interesting, and I'll finish it at some point. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about Red Dead next podcast. Yeah, we'll be okay. closer to. We'll be. It'll be like the almost the start of October too for the next one. Yeah, it'll be the 29th. Yeah, so that'll be a good time to have Red Dead as a uh, topic. So we'll see if I've finished it by then, as well. I'm sure you will have. <laughs> um, so gaming news, loot boxes have uh, have been removed recently from a lot of games in Belgium. I can't remember whether we've talked about that specific part of it uh, because Belgium decided that loot boxes were gambling. Um, yeah, but good yeah, job, Belgium. EA, the the wonderful company that is EA, have all de have basically decided that the Belgium government don't know their own laws. They're wrong, and uh, <laughs> and then they're not gonna remove loot boxes from their games, and they're gonna continue with it and and, and take whatever comes. They're probably gonna you know have to and have make to... the gamers try to beg their government that they want. Oh, yeah, lots boxes. of yeah. There's quite a few, wasn't it? Um, t oh, what, which one is it? 2K, uh, 2K have been doing that, begging, begging people in Belgium that their uh, their players put out a message saying, if you if you you know if you want them back, go to your local government, tell them to relax the laws on loot yeah. boxes, and it's like yeah okay we're gonna just you know 
go to our government to, for you to rob us blind. That's fine. <laughs> Bro, yeah. really? They... Yeah, they really put out the statement like that. Another company uh, did it as well, but I can't remember. Was it um, Activision Blizzard about the Overwatch loot boxes as well, maybe? They took them out of Overwatch probably. as well. So basically, they, they haven't done any... Um, they Dear haven't... my local senator, I really <laughs> want this skin for... Uh, oh, what's High Noon guy's name? I forget. I, I don't, It's been so long. Come on, it's... Uh, Overwatch yeah. boy. I don't play it. Is he Jack no- Marson. John no, Marson. No, stop. <laughs> what, I, this will drive me crazy. What, what's High Noon Boy's we name? We're going to have to wait for someone in the chat to... Uh, yeah, chat, help me. Reaper. Yeah. No, it's not Reaper. Reaper's the one with the shotguns. No. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> McCree, there we go. Thank you. So, yeah, I want this new skin for McCree. That joke would have been so much better if I just knew that. But... <laughs> yeah, you couldn't take it too long over it now. Um, uh, Aunt Belgian. <laughs> Kid Rock. <laughs> There's a criminal investigation into EA's um, loot boxes, isn't there? There, there will be now because they've decided not to yeah. uh, take them out. Yeah, uh, well, it's, because, take the fines or it's because they make so much money from um, from FIFA. Ultimate team. Yeah. yeah, Ultimate Team is insane. They make so much money from it, so they want to try and push back against it. But it, it, I, I saw a headline today that Finland is starting to investigate loot boxes as gambling now as well. Other countries have you know, gotten on that bandwagon. It's only a matter of time before everybody does it. And I don't know. I don't... Hawaii, I think. Say again. A, H- Hawaii in America. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they've they're, had you know, someone be the sort of thing. It's, it, it's, it's... I guess EA's lawyers feel like they have this defense to say that it's not gambling. And that's I guess that's what they're going to they're gonna try to do. And, but... The, the worst thing would... I mean, the, the Belgian Gaming Commission uh, guy, the main guy, he said that even if the EA lawyers, you know, do the, the job that they need and a judge determines that it's not actually gambling and they can keep the loot boxes, they are going to then look at implementing laws to make them illegal. So huh. they really are going hardcore against these loot boxes. And I, I'm happy about it. I wish I lived in Belgium. I have mad respect. For, yeah, for that. But then they're not changing the games at any point. Like they're che- they're taking out the loot boxes of all these games, and they're being exposed for being you know ridiculous because the, all you're left with when you take out the loot boxes is the grind. You know you can end yeah. them, you can end stuff in game, but because they want you, you know they're not going to put them in if they don't want you to spend the money, and they're going to design the game to make you want to spend the money. So when you take the loot boxes away it was like what we saw with shadow of war when they took the loot boxes away was it shadow of war or shadow of Mordor? which one's the first one which shadow one's... of war is the newest one yeah shadow of war they took the loot boxes and all microtransactions out of that game and they had to completely rebalance the ending of the game to make it less grindy because there's no loot boxes anymore to to make it go quicker and not more microtransactions i should say so and by just... that time it was too late to salvage the opinion of the game at that point yeah Yeah. so you know it's it's an interesting time to see how it goes and and whether ea will be successful in belgium and and laws it feels like the law is it hasn't caught up with anything you know it's not it, it might not be say technically gambling but it's glorified gambling and if it doesn't specifically you know fit in with the definition of a gambling law then the gambling law needs to be updated yeah i saw uh, an article on a guy who spent like i think he'd done a freedom of information request that new gdpr that the eu has i remember um, that and he, he wanted to see how much he'd spent on ultimate team and stuff yeah um, yeah and um it turns out he'd spent like over 16 grand i think it was in like space of like five years yeah like fair enough this guy was well off but what about some kid who gets like their mom's credit card or something yeah he didn't it's realize like... how much he'd spent until he actually yeah. got the inf- and it was a challenge for the to, to get EA to give him the information for it wasn't it and, and he, they he... didn't even give him like all the information that he re- requested i think um he'd asked to see like um what sort of players he got for it or something but he refused to say oh anything. yeah they wouldn't give him all the details what yeah the of what he actually there. got yeah it's just i think um I think it's like one of the countries that is trying to ban it is also saying that if you have loot boxes, 
you need to say what the probability is of what you're going to get out of them. Yeah. I think CSGO has to do that in some countries. Yeah. Well, I just want to know that, like, without a law. I mean, if any, you know, I, I want that information displayed, you know. It, it's yeah. some good information to have. I mean, and it'd be it, better if they were gone, but, you know. Very rare. That's all it says. Yeah. Like, yeah. You just what is the actual this percentage AJ chance? McCarran is purple, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be I interesting just, to well, see, like, Jim, in Predator, terms of... Sorry, go on, no, go you go. go. Um, GTA's monetization for, say, when GTA 6 comes around, how Rockstar are going to approach it. Man, forget, we of, get to find out in October where they're going with monetization. You yeah, better watch true. out. We're going to have some buffalo bucks or something. It's going to be good. <laughs> we know how ridiculous, like... Cracking out G- cash. <laughs> we know how ridiculous, like, GTA 5 is now. But, like, that's slowly trickled over time. Like, they've put prices up slowly. So, like, there's not been a whole, like, shitstorm about it like Battlefront had. Like, are they going to release Red Dead or GTA 6 with, like, super high prices and paywalls and stuff? Or are they just going to try and trickle it up again? Yeah, that's think what they'll they release do, the game yeah. With super high, um, like, if everything's really expensive, there'll probably be a shitstorm like the Battlefront 2 fiasco with... Um, GTA probably and Rockstar will take a big hit. That's it. Rockstar have been very smart about it. They started off yeah. small. They gave free DLC initially with the, the beach bum pack, and then it gradually got more and more expensive. And yeah, now it is. Well, is it what it is? Was that the the plan the whole time, or was it because they realized how much money they were making and they've just put the I money? I genuinely really don't like know. How much... Pardon? I genuinely don't know anymore yeah. whether they planned that out in advance. <laughs> Could have I done. think they've realized how much they can make from it and how much people are willing to spend. Yeah. And that's why they've put the prices up. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the next title. Two things that I wanted to mention from the chat. Uh, someone said, uh, you didn't really need the loot boxes to complete Shadow of War. I mean, that is always the rationalization. And, that you, don't, and you don't need cash cards, to, shark cards, to have fun in GTA Online. Yeah. But, it's not about yeah. whether you need it. It's about whether the grind is you know, too far gone the other way so that it becomes a grind for the sake of selling loot boxes rather than part of game design. If you didn't have what? microtransactions... Would no, did, would you still design the game in exactly the same way as what you've done? And most cases is no, because they, they specifically want you to buy the microtransactions, and so they design the game to make you want to buy them. Um, and something else that Predator has just said in the chat, um, our uh, he, he gifted 100 subs earlier uh, this week as part of the stream week. It was craziness. Uh, thank you again, Predator. But he said, I spent £2,500 in 2012 on FIFA Ultimate Tournament, and I'm a grown-up. And it just oh. it shows, and I, I think uh, MB Hammer's talked about this before, how he sort of spent money on the loot boxes or whatever they are in, in Rocket League. And, you know, it, it, it is a, a thing that you can, if, you, if you're necess- you know, that way inclined or you're just very into the game, you can spend all this money and like the guy who you were talking about 16,000 pounds or whatever it was and you just you don't realize it until later on <laughs> it's just it's it's crazy that they're able to get away with that kind of stuff but I hopefully think, not uh, for much longer epic's approach to monetization is probably the way to go i don't think it's particularly malicious because it's all about it's all cosmetics isn't it and you don't have to do loot boxes to get those cosmetics. You yeah, know you how much buy you the cosmetics, yeah. And it's only going to be the skins that you get. You get no advantage in game like you do on GTA with flying bikes of explosives. Yeah, true. You it. know exactly what you're buying with yeah. Fortnite. Even though some of them might be expensive, it's not. It's not like it's not ridiculous. And you, you and know, I mean, why do I want a skin in a game where I'm going to land and die in four seconds anyway? I mean, I only get to see the skin <laughs> falling through the air. It's motion blur. It doesn't really matter. So. Well, that's so, the point, though. Like, it's all down to you. You're not diminishing your experience, really, if you're not buying the skins. Yeah, unless you're someone who has, just, like, cosmetics mean everything to them. Then, you know, but that's more of a personal case than as a general case. Yeah. Yeah, so speaking of uh, speaking of Epic and uh, Rocket League uh, together, uh, I've been testing out uh, Rocket League's Rocket Pass this week, these past few weeks since it launched. Mm. 
Cool boy, that's rough. <laughs> hmm. it's, uh, people, people in the community are hugely appreciative of it um, and, and whatnot. There are a couple of issues that I found, though. Uh, first of all, if you don't know how it works, basically you pay to enter this, this rocket pass. It's, uh, it's £7.95 in the UK uh, to, to uh, enter into this, this rocket pass. And it allows you to gain new uh, cosmetic items uh, for each, each new XP level you go up, you get a, a new cosmetic item for your, for your car or whatever, which is fine. Um, there are 70 levels to the uh, rocket pass, so 70 different, if you, if you went up 70 different XP levels in the game, then you would get uh, all of the items. Um, each level. I thought it went past that though too. I thought it like does. It... It, it does go past that, but those are the those are the the flat rate items. Okay. Um, so each XP level is twenty thousand XP, and you get you gain on average. There are little boosts and whatnot that you can get throughout the the rocket pass period. Uh, on average, you get about fifteen hundred XP per match. So I did a bit of rough maths, and it ended up. Um, to get all 70 items within the Rocket Pass, um, you would have to play the game for 93 hours, uh, not including loading times. 93 hours. Um, and the, the Rocket Pass runs from, I think it was the, the beginning of September to the end of November. So, yeah, there's, there's about, about 100 and, 112 days, something like that, to, to, to get all of that, that stuff. And if you don't get all of it within that time, then it, it runs out. But Just play an hour a day. You can, but it's it's okay though. You can pay more. You can pay more. You can pay an extra seven ninety five to get an extra ten levels if you want. And then you would get your ten items instantly. So <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, that's um very similar <laughs> to Fortnite's battle pass system. Yes. That's like the new thing paying, now, isn't it? Those battle passes. Pounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then, like, I've only just... I play Fortnite, like, two or three hours a night. When the season first came out, I was playing it quite a lot. And I've only just... It's like a couple of days ago. It's on week 10 now, which is the last week. I've only just got the top tier thing, the top cosmetic item. And I've just finished it. And all my so, mates yeah. are still a little bit behind, and they're, like, having to play a lot. But then, get I'm, I'm guessing you can pay, like, an extra... Um... Like pay like an extra fee to unlock all the items. Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, all these people who it gets to week ten and they haven't unlocked everything yet and they're not going to be able to do it. That's when the money starts coming in, so they can unlock yeah. it before it runs out. I, mean, I just pay the money instantly. If I <laughs> if I care enough to pay seven dollars for you know the pass, I'm I care enough to pay another seven dollars to not have to work for it. Yeah. No, yeah. I think like to, to to pay your way to the top, it's like. Hundred and quid. Oh, okay, never yeah. mind. Not ridiculous. Maybe yeah. I'll just play your game. Each tier, each tier is a hundred. Each tier is hundred fifty V bucks, the in-game currency, and then you get some V bucks like in the Can battle pass itself. Can we stop with yeah. in-game currency, please? Can we just <laughs> well, yeah, stop? Yeah, that's not good. We um, need to stop. And towards the end want, of the season, I don't want your Bioware points. I don't want your V bucks. I don't want your gold bars. I don't want anything. I just want it to be money. Right, that's um, and then towards the end of the season, they'll put out like uh, 900 V bucks for 10 tiers, so they'll give you a discount on 10 tiers, uh, just to, as a quick cash grab. So yeah, they do have a little bit of a predatory mindset, but it's not entirely malicious because again, it's all cosmetic stuff that you want anyway. So, yeah. but but uh, Fortnite was free to play Battle Royale anyway. It was free to play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. true. That's a Rocket big difference. League. Rocket League wasn't. No, <laughs> it yeah. was it was free for a bit on PS Plus. Yeah, um, it was yeah. a free game three years on PS ago. Plus. <laughs> three years ago, but now it's not. Yeah. So, yeah, that yeah. seems like it. Uh, that seems like it is. Like, it, and it's yeah. not. It's not a full price game. It's not a full price game, but still, know. like that seems like it, the way that it's going to go with battle passes. Most games, I bet, are going to introduce yeah. those. The thing is, though, because Fortnite's free to play, you that you don't necessarily get anything like straight off the bat you have to buy everything but for example if a triple a title comes out like gta is from, and they have a battle pass well, gta is probably a bad example but if they have a battle pass they should have cosmetics already there beforehand for you to unlock yeah. you can't just have nothing and then offer a battle pass if you're paying like 60 pound for a full game 
That's it. Reserve a game. That's the quality there to choose from. When you buy a game, you should get a game. Yeah, you should <laughs> actually game. get something Let's... for it. I know. It seems <laughs> like know. they're wanting to make a free-to-play game with no content and have you pay extra for content, but also pay the $60 asking price for the game in the first place. Well, that's exactly yeah. what NBA 2K19's done, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> NBA 2 k is absolutely ridiculous. We thought 2K18 was bad, but 2 k is even worse. So, Does it at least that. have a cringy story mode featuring a character that you can make from scanning your own face? I yeah, hope but you, so. you, you, you pay to make a character and make changes to the character and level <laughs> the character up. Uh, Are you for real? With in-game yep. currency, which you can for also real. buy. But so, then you do that in GTA. It's not as if you don't. You know, we have but to pay. But okay. it's 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 okay though. Last year's one, you had to pay to change your haircut. You had to pay your in-game currency to, to change your haircut. You don't have to do that this year. It's just everything else you have to pay. Oh, for. okay. Oh, well, that's so all right. Everything. Then. So, everything has yeah. been oh, forgiven. And, and also, they've made uh, they've made the payout for XP in matches thirty percent less than last year as well. So. <laughs> Just increase the grind just a little bit more for you guys. Ah, oh, good, good. Nice. Yeah. Never nice. ceases to amaze me. And this is the same uh, the same game where the developer 2K are asking asking the people of Belgium to go to their governments and ask them to re-enable loot boxes. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you love 2K, <sighs> tell them to give us. If you want to pay to uh, change on your character and, and do all that and and you know give us even more money, then go to your local government and tell them. Taking advantage of the I'm emailing my congressman. <laughs> so I can you don't really love us if you don't want Fortnite. loot boxes. <laughs> Basically, just saying go and harass them so that they can't be bothered to enforce the law. <laughs> so, uh, Spider Man. Hey, RDT. Oh! You've been playing as Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. So no. your, oh, for those who don't know who that was, that was our, uh, our po- po- podcast producer, MB Hammer. I saw one or two comments in the chat saying who's talking now. So I just figured I'd just better give another reintroduction. Yeah. Carry so on, RDT. How, how, how's Spider-Man going? You like it? Oh, it's so good. Oh, oh. good. We're going to have differing opinions. Sweet. <laughs> why? You don't like it? Have you not I played like it? I like it. I like it, but like I don't understand why everyone is just collectively nutting at the same time over this game. Like I mean, I mean there's just so it. much hot white liquid in that I game. Mean, but it's just... I mean, it's a good serviceable <laughs> game, but it's not like perfect by any means. It is a good video <sighs> game, but it's not like I'm not sitting here like, oh, I got to play some Spider Man. I got to play some Spider Man. I got to play some Spider Man. You know, it's just a good dude. Game. Just swinging around the city alone is so satisfying. Now yeah. I wish that it was the web swinging was a little bit closer to Spider Man Two game, but this is fully serviceable and it is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good, but it's not like like it's not, not it's a, in a it's world not a 10 of, out of 10. NBA Two Ks, <sighs> Battlefield or Battlefront, whatever the hell it was before all the outrage in a world where GTA exists and they're going to have Buffalo no, Bucks and stop, Dead Dead. Stop your argument, okay? I do not like the argument of, well, everything else is bad, so you should be okay. Look, just It's a shining light starving, in the community. Doesn't mean that I'm not still hungry, okay? I can, I can complain if I want to. The gameplay so far, I haven't, I'm only like 25% in. The gameplay is I'm great. I'm than you, actually. The combat so, is fantastic. Well, I work full time. I have a job, so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> The combat is great. The web swing is fantastic. The acting, the voice acting is good. The story is fun. There's no microtransactions. The it's beautiful, which I mean, we said last week, like that's not a. It's kind of the standard now, but it is gorgeous. Like there's nothing to dislike about it. Maybe yeah. you could be nitpicky and say that it's not the greatest game of all time. It is a but, little buggy too. I have experienced some bugs. Yeah. As going but it's through. a bit, you know, well, it's that's a maybe, can't discredit maybe the whole game good. off of your books. Yeah. It does look really good. I've not well, I'm it not myself. trying to discredit. I'm just <laughs> maybe the the fervor has gotten to me that Pete, like you know, people Pete, are Pete, like game Pete. of the year, game of the year, best game I've ever played. Oh my god, oh <laughs> Peter Parker, you know, like maybe people's this so hype confusing. about it has dim, dim, no, diminished your excitement. Well, it's. It, I was never excited in the first place. It's. It's just a. It's a perfectly ser- serviceable, good game that is recommended. But it's not like we don't need to sit and jerk the game off on Reddit all day. 
Like, calm down. They're, you know, it's not that great. How else are you going to get the white liquid out of your wrists? <laughs> Come on. It does, it does seem like the, the general impression that, I mean, I haven't played it either, but the, the general impression that's people are like out there telling so people that, like, you've got to buy a PlayStation 4 for this. I did. You had to. <laughs> but are you, how are you feeling about that decision? Uh, it was 100% perfect it, it's is great it, i have no $500 regrets hundred dollar oh, game you for you no what a 500 dollars game i brought my old xbox one traded in bought a 200 dollar used oh PlayStation 4. you're not even on xbox anymore i thought you kept your xbox no i have an xbox one x oh oh okay. i've i got them both baby I, i'm <laughs> get, like i said i've got the, a full-time uh... job <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you have you have income you you go to a job and then every week or two weeks or monthly you get more money on a recurring basis i i don't know what that's like uh, <laughs> yeah. did you get did you get the special edition ps4 with the spider-man no i just literally told you i got to use ps4 just a regular uh, one i don't i'm not listening to you, on, <laughs> yeah. to you well show. it just proves though that it's a console seller yeah yeah, yeah. True. but the thing I mean, is this is that's the that's what these like something that we you know you always need to keep in mind with these games is especially on god of war spider-man Everyone hails them as being, you know, just great single player experiences. We don't have to deal with loot boxes or anything like that. But they're made in a completely different way. They're not made to, they can be made to make a loss as a game. They can be put all the development money in. And if the game doesn't sell enough on its own to make that money back, that's okay because Sony are banking on it being a system seller because that's where they'll make their money. So you can't really hold uh, like exclusives like God of War or Spider Man to the same standards as third party games that you know aren't getting that kind of income from the the platform. They'll have to over well. monetize and lock yeah. The I mean, no, don't get me wrong. And it's not an excuse for the ridiculous monetization that most games do. But the, the, yeah. there's a there's a happy balance there. But you can't really compare them all sorts than the the system seller type games, the exclusives. Yeah, I already bought like all of the PS4 ex exclusives that I wanted, like that I'm going to eventually play, maybe stream. I don't know. I never stream. I got Bloodborne, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War 4. Uh, I've got the old GTAs like uh, GTA 3 and Vice City and San Andreas because um, you can't play those on Xbox for some reason because this game is trash. Um, <laughs> and Spider-Man, like uh, I've got them all lined up, ready to go. Yeah. Well, anyway, my my thoughts for Spider Man. It's a solid like eight out of ten game. My like eight eight and a half out of ten game is a solid, a good example of a video game. But it is not like the best eight and game. a half out of ten. Yeah. yeah that's, I, a, I agree with Nos. I I would give it that. I really enjoy it. I really yeah. Enjoy it. A great game. That's really good. Like yeah. that's that's well, almost I'm, I'm just saying worthy. that I, I just the fervor, the overwhelming fervor that has just come onto me from all sides of the internet is too. But much. when all other games that are coming out are like sevens and sixes and loaded with microtransactions and everyone's sick of them, surely you can understand that when a actual proper game comes out, there will be an extra level of you know, well, I mean, that, that Spider Man is just how video games should be. They're just, that's supposed to be. That's what you should expect. That like, is true. Is Spider, -Man. Yeah. Spider Man's the baseline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like everyone's really disappointed by most games that come out nowadays. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, yeah. it feels very rare that games like uh, as well made as like Spider Man, for example. Like, they seem yeah. like rare gems. Yeah. Now, which is what. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut those. Nas, would your 10 be Red Dead Redemption? Yeah, probably in, in retrospect. I'd probably, I mean... I'd give it a solid 8.5. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> <Sorry. really laughs> differing opinions. Oh my goodness, we can't do that. <laughs> but, I, I don't know. Because, but, but Red Dead Redemption was a story and a setting that I could get invested in. Spider-Man is not. I don't even like Spider-Man, honestly. I think Spider-Man's pretty lame. I'm going to be honest. I think Spider Man's lame. Oh, here we okay. go. Don't, Listen, let's not get I'm, started I'm, on the whole superhero I'm, I'm versus superhero discussion. Okay, stop. Look, you don't have to sarcastically quip to everything, Spider Man. Okay? <laughs> I, Web's a guy. One, Hang in there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just high fives himself. Just 
comment come down. It's there. overbearing. It, it, it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it passes the point of being funny to overbearing. And Spider Man doesn't have like the the social like level that like say Tony Stark does for it to be okay for him to make these quips. Like Tony Stark <laughs> makes these quips. He's got so much money he can do what he wants. Peter Parker. This is, the, this is everybody that knows okay. the source material going, what are you talking about? I, well I, look, I, from the little God. bit that I know in the setting of this game is what I'm saying. Just stop. Good God, what are you talking about? Do you even know Spider Man? Is all I, you know I'm Toby a... McGuire Probably, and Andrew yes, Garfield? Exactly. Yes. I hate you, Nas. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this I is going like to be a. Th this sorry. could be another episode of the podcast entirely. Superhero <laughs> anyway, argument. We can move. We can move on to a to a new topic. Uh, the new uh, topic that's the listed on the 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 sheet, the document, is Nos owns a potato. Yes, I own an what? inferior gaming system now with the PS4. I want to talk hey. about that. What it's do you, uh, before you, before you do, uh, GTA Wise Guy, what do you play on primarily? Oh, yeah, we have it. Um, the Xbox One, but I'm noticing how shite it is and unsupported it is by <laughs> a lot of developers. <laughs> yeah. Xbox One X, I really want one because I'm sure it'll be good. But for example, if I'm playing Fortnite, it's just, it's so bad. Like, it's just either it's unoptimized by Epic. Or the console is just really bad. Dude, do you think that's up. bad? Why don't you go play some PUBG on your on your uh, old Xbox there? <laughs> Tell me how that runs. So have um, you not uh, sort of gone for the whole PC gaming route? Um, I do have a PC which is set up for gaming, but I just don't particularly enjoy it. Hmm. Um, mostly for like, I suppose GTA is fine, but like especially shooters, I don't like using mouse and keyboard and stuff. Um, you have an I, advantage pre I also prefer turning stuff. very slowly and having a auto Nos, play nice. You're the worst host ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mainly play an Xbox One, but even on GTA, it's really bad. Like it's sometimes, say if you have a car meet of like 30 people or with like low riders or something, you'll be on like 10 FPS. Oh yeah, just we know, driving around we know the difficulty like, of that. Yeah. You know me like bouncing between 20 and 30 is pretty bad, but I do play Xbox a lot mainly because a lot of my mates are on there. So. Yeah, that's that's what it, it says. Be. It says something to like how far I guess PC gaming has become mainstream, and like looking at a game's performance has become more mainstream. That we can sit here and objectively say the Xbox One is bad because it runs at an inferior frame rate. Because I don't feel like with the 360 and the PS3, people really had that kind of conversation. You know, it no, was that just, wasn't a conversation. I like Xbox. I like PS3. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. Now we can actually sit down and you know look at the facts and say, hmm, this game runs at a lower frame rate and a lower resolution on this system. Therefore, this game is inferior on this system, and people actually care now, as opposed to you know. Back um, in the you can notice generation. the big difference is like because they've got like two different generations of consoles running at the same time, pretty much. You've got the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, and you've got the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. Like, I've seen like videos where you can just see how much, how, how good the Xbox One X is compared to the normal Xbox One. Yeah. I feel like it'd be like, like GTA doesn't support Xbox 360 anymore because it's just double the work for the developers. And I feel like it's probably a bit too broad, but too big of a difference. But the Xbox One X, no, the Xbox One running alongside the Xbox 360. It just doesn't make sense, which I see is a big problem now with the the One and the One X and the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. I think it's a bit stupid that they're running them both at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little weird. And it, I mean, you know, like there's no, I don't know why anyone would buy just a PS4, or just an Xbox One with the, the higher tier versions out. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I know yeah. from speaking to developers as well, like if they had a choice, they would only release their games on PC because it's just so well, much course. better. You've got a lot more freedom of like how you want your game to look and how it's going to perform. Like I'm sure like the console, like like Microsoft will say to certain devs, don't let the players change the settings on the games. Because obviously yeah, if you put your, it has to look as good as it possible. It has to look good. Yeah. And sacrifice in performance. Because if mm -hmm. you put your settings lower on an Xbox and then someone's on PS4 and it's running fine on higher settings and people see that difference, they're obviously going to go and buy a PS4. So, yeah. yeah. 
and, and but it's, it's getting know. a little bit better on console now with, with it is the, the, the there are tiers. some games you, there's some options on some games that are like you can have 30 fps bells and whistles all the amazing light effects and whatnot that the ps4 pro or the xbox one x can master or you yeah. can have it at 1080p 60 you know yeah and i wish spider-man had that feature too i yeah. mean I, yeah. I, it's a real shame that i have to play spider-man at 30 fps i you know it it detracts from the game experience for me yeah but so how have you been just... taking it how have you been feeling with your your ps4 your know, console oh i i don't like it i mean it <laughs> it, it it's per it it is an inferior system to what i have in every way pretty much and I have to have it because of exclusives. I don't like the UI. I don't like that there are no options. I don't like using a controller for shooters. Uh, I don't like it, but yeah. The UI That's did take some time to get used to for me. I, it just wasn't I don't wasn't like intuitive. the UI on Xbox or PS4, honestly. I think they're both Yeah, they're both, they both seem awful. Yeah. So The, the best I UI, mean, I thought, is still the 360. Yeah, but it that was... doesn't. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily just because I don't like it doesn't mean that the PS4 Pro is bad. Um, it's a it does exactly what it needs to do, and for someone who's just interested in, you know, they just play video games as a hobby. It's a great system, you know, because they don't, you know, you don't care what what's the frame rate. I don't know what frame rate is. You know, what resolution? I, I think I have a 4K TV. I'm not sure. You know, it's a perfectly ser- serviceable game machine, and it has, in my opinion, the best exclusives. But Considering I come from somewhere that is superior, uh, in just about every way. <laughs> yeah. Xbox um, has no exclusives. Yeah, okay. X- Xbox is. Sea of Thieves. It's like for me, bro. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's, a, like, it's a really well made game, but it's just lacking so much content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As most games seem to be these days. Yeah. I have fun with it when you have other people. You can't play it by yourself, though. That was boring. I find. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't know how many weeks ago now it was. It was a few, maybe a few months ago. We had Jan two two nine five on our podcast, the notorious yes, leaker of of information from GTA Rockstar offices, and we had him on. We spoke about many things. We got an insight into how he gets his leaks and his information and stuff, and it was a really good podcast. I recommend going and watching it. Find it in the playlist or, I don't know, wherever you're listening to this to, if you're on Spotify or iTunes or whatever. If anyone's watching this and wants to get it on Spotify or iTunes, it is available. Um, but he, he, he said at one point that if he's always said that if Rockstar ever contacted him and asked him to stop leaking information, he would. He would respect that decision and he would do it. He told us that on the podcast. And then maybe a week ago, he, or maybe less than a week ago, I don't know, time's melding into one for me now. But What is time? Really? What is time? I have no idea. <laughs> it's all just one stream to the next, we forget days. <laughs> um, he he tweeted out... Happened, will happen again. <laughs> he tweeted out and said that... Uh, Take Two had contacted him and asked him to stop leaking information about Rockstar, and he's gonna, you know, he accepted that and he's not gonna leak anymore. Wow! So that's it. No more leaks from Jan. Supposedly, us. <laughs> well, time to unfollow him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but supposedly, uh, that the person who, the, the lady who spoke, he spoke to, was very nice, very kind about it, all that kind of stuff. But. Um, yeah, that that's it. They they did finally decided that for some, whatever reason now was the time that they didn't want him leaking anything, and they can They actually went out their way to contact him about it, and that's that's it. So that's, I presume they'll take legal action if he does decide to. Then I don't know. I don't I mean. I get maybe this was just a an initial conversation, and he said, "Okay, I won't yeah. do it anymore," and that's it's it. And that no more needs to be said, it but. Is. It would, it would just, That's a damn shame because he's the one guy that isn't malicious about it or tries to undercut Rockstar. And there's still going to be people that put out leaks that yeah. don't care as much. Um, that as I mean, F- FunMW2 is pretty Court. good with that kind of uh, stuff as well. He does it you know, in a decent way, but he generally... He always felt like uh, Jan would have someone in, in a bit more of contact or something like that that he would well we already discussed that he knows the janitor he knows the janitor he's not going to be cleaning the offices anymore that's a shame (laughs) 
<laughs> but um, yeah, they, I, I can't understand that because there must still be people who are going to leak information, um, like Fun and Do Two, for example. Or a rock star gonna go more hardcore on it? They've asked Jan to stop, and he stopped. But if other people don't stop, are they gonna start taking legal action against people or whatever? It, it, I don't know. It's uh. I'm sure they'll send people in to at least threaten, you know, hire some PIs and bust down some doors. <laughs> they, already, they already did that a couple times. So. Yeah. I mean, it almost feels like though that Rockstar want some stuff leaked. Like. Yeah, that's what that's what play, was I like the, the new cars that are, that are like due to come out. They're all put in the game well, like well early, well ahead of time, and they're, they're quite easy to get to. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily because they want them leaked. I think that's more because they don't want to push multiple updates to console. Yeah, I know that they have to like, they're probably charged by Steam and Microsoft and stuff for more. Steam, updates. it doesn't charge you anything to update games, as far as I know. Okay. On PC, but on console, I believe it does. Yeah. So. And I mean, plus, it's easier to just you know change a tunable on the server or whatever, and bam, here's your car. Then push another I think, update. I think it's it's really uh, unusual. I th- unusual is probably not the right word, but it's it's strange that that Rockstar are going after the people that are leaking, that, that are giving the information out to the public. What's what's happening to their staff? Get a hold of your staff, Rockstar. Yeah, <laughs> are the people <laughs> leaking the information? Not, I mean, the fact is, if the president of the United States can't get that, you know, <laughs> but it's I mean, not his when, fault that he's I mean, getting this information, you yeah. know, he's not under NDA. You know, it's your staff that are under yeah, NDA. True. You know, <laughs> but that's why I was always under the impression that maybe it was someone at Rockstar as part of the community team who were you know, leaking that information themselves to build up hype for the next DLC. Well, that, I, that's I why know. it's probably going to be interesting to see if it's just Jan that's getting this treatment. Yeah. Or if, it's, if it's going to be other... Get... Yeah, exactly. It's going to be... Stop it's well. they, they want to shape the message that's going out to the public. Yeah. So do they do that just by cutting Jan out and uh, just going to, I don't know, Mr. Boss, for example, and just being like... <laughs> Hey, I'm a janitor at Rockstar. Do you want to know the latest information? <laughs> I was walking by a commu- uh, computer monitor the other day, and, <laughs> and I saw this new car. But I'm not a car yeah. guy. I don't know really what it looked like. But <laughs> what was um? The, do you remember that guy who was leaking on? I think it was like some weird. It was like 4chan or something. No, yeah, it was 4chan. Um, yeah, some some weird site. Some weird. Yeah, except there was niche an, site. an R34 coming. R34 Skyline. Turns out it was an R32. So hmm. yeah, I remember those leaks. Can kind of narrow it down that way? You know, it's not one of the vehicle artists. Wasn't it so. gun running that there was all leaked in that way before? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, so uh, we'll move on. If there's not other gaming news, anyone has? No. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to a bit of last episode follow up. Has anybody got any comments oh, that you picked out from the last oh. episode? I am yeah. sure I read a few. There, there, there were a lot of comments on the last episode for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, and they were all just... The, all of them were just a competition between who could mess up Mr. Boss for the win's name the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toss for the loss. <laughs> no one's thought of that before. <laughs> there were some quite... There, there was one or two very negative comments towards myself. But beyond that, yeah. the vast majority oh, were uh, well, the positive. Fun. So I appreciate everyone for the support for that and the support in general over what happened this time last week and all the, the support on the tweets and stuff like that and the likes on the comment on his video. I, I appreciate all that. Um, there were also there some requests to have Raggedy Dan on even though we've already Again. had that man. Yeah. No, we're not happy. Um, we're good. I hate to be rude, but do you mind if I take a toilet break? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah go for it. To do it. Yeah. I leave all the time without even saying anything. <laughs> um, so, so Phil, Phil's actually picked out one one comment that he thought was particularly good, uh, apart from the homework that he did. Um, so, his comment was uh, from Valle Paul, V A L L E P A U L E. Ali, mm-hmm. Polly, whatever. I'm, I'm the butcher this time. <laughs> he says, sick, like actually down with the cold. And yes, Sugar Free Nos, I'm your guy in the comment section. I remember them coffee breaks. Can't find yeah. an equal racing game to GT4. 
And Red <laughs> Dead Redemption 2 multiplayer with GTA men, Bruffy, RDT, and Sugar Free Nos would be awesome. I'd watch the shit out of that. <laughs> well, get ready, oh, it'll happen. One. Here's the one that I liked. <laughs> it was from uh, someone who's obviously a very successful adult who has been through many different trials and tribulations in his life. I responded to this one personally, but he goes, it's oh, obvious yeah. It's obvious you're very naive about many things, but welcome to the big bad world. By the time GTA 6 <laughs> comes out, there will be another YouTube doing what you do better than you. Don't make the mistake of thinking the kids that follow you will be following in four or five years' time when GTA 6 comes out. They'll have grown up by then. Make the most of it while you can. You're a one-game, one-trick pony dude with delusions of grandeur. So, and I, <laughs> I was just like, Bruffy, you're not ready for the hard truths indeed. Yeah, you're not ready. And so I was like, you're a no trick, no audience, nobody. Go back. Your lunch break's over. You know, go flip some burgers, chop, chop. And he's yeah, like, yeah. I'm not deluded, Sonny. I'm like, all right, Grandpa. <laughs> Who are you? What is going on? Yeah, that was. Uh, I saw your response to that. It was. It, it packed me up. Because I saw that comment. I felt bad and because like, that's I, a. It, it was it was a you know particularly scathing comment and I don't necessarily get those very often and most of ninety nine point nine percent of the time those kind of comments I just don't even look at. Oh, but that I was hilarious. that was during the moment you know where I was having this downward feeling about everything that I was doing and I wasn't feeling very good. I'm I'm, I'm on the I'm getting back to it now and I'm pretty happy. But uh, that was like right in the center of that moment where it was all crumbling around me. And I read that and I was like, oh my God, this is totally, this is, he's right. I am useless. I need to go find a job. I need to just leave it all. I'm useless. I'm a one trick pony, oh. delusions of grandeur. Who do I think I am? That's it. What's, what's the point? And then I saw your response and I was like, <laughs> yeah he's no i mean like he's nobody who does he think he is talking to anybody else Especially but then you know i mean a commenter I, obviously he is very right. important i mean it I mean, was just, it was it, it, it was literally just because i was in that i was in a particularly bad place at that point but then you know i, I now I, I just laugh it off i mean like i do with most comments that mm. are ever like that but uh yeah that was, uh, that was an interesting one i thought you might bring that one up um, yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, there's a miss. Uh, We're no, just going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here, here's one of my favorites. Uh, I live near Mr. Boss, and every time I see his McLaren, <laughs> I want to rip the plate off his car. I'm not lying. He lives in Georgia, and he goes to Chick Fil A on a Thursday. <laughs> I saw that one. I saw that comment as well. Mr. Boss has a McLaren. I'm not lying. <laughs> it's so good. Does he actually have a McLaren? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty, someone in the comments uh, of like in the stream chat said he clickbaited that too, and he actually doesn't own a McLaren. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if have a, a Lexus or something at one point, like a. Oh man, that was just that, the just, comments. Just, they, they were they were really were there really were a lot of supportive just, just comments the on the last added episode. In but... that he goes to Chick Fil A. <laughs> there were some great comments on the last episode. It was, oh, I mean, man. it was inevitable. Nitro Thirty Six, my man, you were a great comedian. That's, <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I'm, in, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I, I live in Georgia. And that's his evidence. Is yeah, he, he goes, goes to Chick Fil A Chick-fil-A on a Friday. <laughs> Thursday. 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 Not sorry, Friday. sorry, not Friday. Friday. Can never yes, go to Thursday. <laughs> Obviously, he has a oh. No, Mr. Boss for the win is important enough that he goes to Chick Fil A on a Sunday. That's the <laughs> Chick-fil-A. Do you think? Do you think he goes, stands in line, and then just like the person in front of him orders, and he goes, "I'll just take what he had." Do you think he does that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have whatever he had. Oh, man. <laughs> So, yeah, wait, before we, we just do that, we need to follow up on uh, the the actual outcome of the the ridiculousness that happened last week. Um, for those who didn't see, I did upload a, a sort of response. He apologized on Twitter. He uh, took down the video, the offending video, um, and I, I, I reacted to it on stream at the time when that happened. So if you haven't seen that, it's on my second channel as part of the podcast highlights uh, playlist, really, because I just thought that was the best place for it as a follow-up to episode 35. It's basically just, you know, 
this same kind of apology that you get from big businesses when they do something bad and <laughs> put the hand in the cookie jar and get caught. It's like, oh, sorry, I won't do it again. I'm sorry. And then yeah. they'll do it again. <laughs> nobody's, we, we understand, nobody's... We understand. We understand your interpretation of content. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're sorry. We won't do it. We won't do it again. We promise. Forgive us. And then he gets praise for. Uh, wow, well, man, you're a stand-up guy, dude. You <laughs> yeah. you did something wrong, and then you apologize for it. Nobody's <laughs> ever done that before. How about not doing stuff wrong? How about you just don't do wrong things? <laughs> yeah. How about you? I mean, stop. It was not just my stop. intention to offend. <laughs> yeah. All right, go on yeah. then, MB Hammer. Okay, so 322 comments in total. That was a lot of comments. That must be our most commented on episode. Yeah, possibly the max between uh, between episodes. Um, Both of which we asked... were about the same man. <laughs> <laughs> we asked our viewers uh, if they got to the end of the uh, end of the, the podcast to say the word "sick" in their comments mm. because Bruff was just sick of it. I was sick of life. Of it. He was just sick of it. So. Out of 322 comments, how many do you think said the word sick? Nasa's going first. 48 <laughs> and a half. Okay. Someone how just many? wrote SI. 48. I'm going 48. low. Because I just I'm saw, a... I mean, now if you would have asked me who tried to make a joke messing up Mr. Boss for the Wind's name, I would have said like 250. <laughs> <laughs> 322. <laughs> for sick, for 48. Because uh, nobody will actually watch the last episode. They just get Mr. Boss for the Mr. Boss for the loss is <laughs> so bad, <laughs> you know. And then they left. They didn't actually watch it. Uh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm also gonna go lower, not as low. I'm gonna go 53. I'm gonna go even lower. I'm gonna say 39 because I agree. I think from what I was looking when I, I, re I mean I read all comments, but. It seemed like most of them were, you know, comments talking about what we were talking about, but didn't include the word sick as if... Mr. Loser they've, they've watched <laughs> <laughs> All the time. We, we, we right, I think the majority uh, of people... file a copyright claim on Mr. Uh, toss for the loss. Mrs. Loss. <laughs> I think most people will have watched the bit where we talked about the issues and then not watched to the end where we say the word. So... Yeah. Do you want to put in a guess, GTA Wise guy? Almost like um, to make her I'll say six seven. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, do you want number of occurrences of the word or comments? Comment. Comments Comment. first. Okay. Yeah. Comments. So comments. Thirty-three. Oh, <laughs> I went hey. for one. Oh, hi. Wow. I was right. Yeah. It was only six oh, off. That's me. Three. No, we're all I've... high. We all lose. Uh, no, we that's not how it in. works. It's who's yes, the closest. No. no, it's no. Have you ever seen The Price is Right? We Jesus. aren't playing The Price is Right. We have this <laughs> argument every time. Yes, we are. We are not playing yes, The Price is Right. It's whoever's it's closest. Price is right rules. Oh no. no, it's we whoever's closest without going over. I'm so children, frustrated. Please, children, <laughs> calm down. But that's. I that's... just said it's me because it's 33 and already 33. Ah, okay. and that's, yeah. 43 occurrences of the word sick spread across 33 comments so okay thank you once again phil hoff for doing your homework you are a legend i like the i like the comments that say uh hi phil <laughs> and we will tell you the words to say at the end of this episode for the comments um right so community questions do we have any this is being a long podcast yeah we've been killing it all right it's been amazing. Oh, and everyone just sleep talking about LEDs. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed. Super interesting. Right. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Mega Mario 64. He has a question for uh, Robin, I believe. Hello, Kyle. You're on the Choking Hazard podcast, the show where we look good no matter how far away you are. Who's your question for and what is your question? Nah, that's very subjective. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So yeah, my my question is for you, Robin. Um, okay. That would be what's the uh, hardest and easiest thing about making any of your vehicles? Uh. Okay, so. 
Probably... I'll start with the hardest thing. Um, the hardest thing is probably trying to make what you want to create without like m making it work functionally in game as in how do you how much detail do you put into it um consciously thinking about how much detail the player is going to see how much they need to see um and how much can you get away with in terms of um where the player's not going to see and how little detail you can put into it making sure shading's done properly with all the right topology and stuff like that just the technical stuff while you're trying to be creative doing um while you're modeling stuff do you feel as if like work, your, your, the technical within... stuff would be limiting your like what you want to put down yeah my yeah. creativity yeah, yeah. Sort of that's what i was going to say is you know, like i nice. could just make yeah. like a wide body arch and i could just like smooth it over and it might have tons of like it might have a really high try count and look really good but it's not gonna it's not representative of being industry standard and what rockstar would do sort of thing yeah um, the easiest thing is probably picking a car and what I'm going to do to it. I've got too many ideas for stuff to create, but I just don't have the time to create it. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Good question, Mr. Mega Mario. Thank you, uh, Mario, for the question. Uh... All right. Uh, next up, we've got Mr. C. Balboina. Hello, Carl. You're on the Choking Hazard podcast, the show where we go to Chick Fil A every Thursday. <laughs> I got them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I heard what you say, Nas. I do like Chick Fil A too. But I don't care why. <laughs> well, you can only go there on Thursday, so uh, from here yeah. on out. Anyway, what is, who's your question for? What's your question? Okay, Robin. Um. Uh, you know, you know Black Panther, aka or Theo, that's his real name, right? Yeah. Another Are you like friends with him? Are you friends, friends with him? With mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. Yeah. All right. So every time whenever Theo posts a tweet and then you says, "Challenge me against with your RCF," or now he has, now he owns a scum. Like, you, you know, we're just like they're doing jokes and fun things, but, but. You you know you see his videos, but comparing from your videos to his videos, like how is it? How did? Say the last bit like, again. Like comparing his videos against your videos, like what is the difference between uh, Black Panther and you? Um, I suppose Theo is more of an entertainer than me. Um, he likes to be stupid and daft in his videos, and it's quite entertaining. Um. But yeah, he's more of an entertainer in terms of um, just being comedic and stuff like that. I'm more, I would say, educational, if that makes sense. Um, and I talk about more creative and artistic stuff in my videos rather than trying to be funny and stuff like that. Hopefully that answers your question. Does it answer your question? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But okay. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Um, oh. Did you say something about his RCF or...? Saying yeah, something about sure challenging it. Question. Um, we'll get his RCF, yeah, not his car, because I do love those cars. Then, <laughs> yeah, I keep challenging yeah. him to race. Uh, his R thirty four. He keeps chickening out. Even with the Evo, <laughs> even yeah. with the Evo. <laughs> Evo is faster than his R thirty four, so <laughs> confidently win. Hell yeah! <laughs> Just watch <laughs> Drag Race. Wrong. You and Theo, Evo versus Skyline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty good. Yeah. Thank you, Seba right. Buena, for the question. Yeah, thanks a lot. I have a call-in question, actually. Ring, 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 ring. Hey, Robin, what car do you drive? We haven't talked about that the whole show. We'll uh, and even wait. Quickly. D does it have the, the misfiring system from Initial D that was so important? Uh, by I've not seen Initial D, but it does misfire. <laughs> oh, I've okay. got a, um, a little... It was mapped into it, so this was done on a DCU remap. Um, it's like a, an anti-lag system, so uh, I've got like an intercooler spray button, but when I hold it for like three seconds, it will um, retard the ignition just a little bit, so that um, it spits flames and stuff like that, so it, it's still igniting as it comes out the exhaust. 
keeps the turbos pulled up. And if I, I rev it up and I let off, um, it'll just pop and bang <laughs> all the way down the Excellent. rev. Excellent. And it spits flames as well. So. Excellent. So that, that's about what it was like on initial D, so you satisfied my question. Anyway, that's that's considering I drive a nineteen ninety nine Chevrolet Cavalier, uh that's a pretty cool car. <laughs> that's a really cool car. So you don't drive a sweet. five thousand dollar Miata hunk of, hunk of metal. Hey yeah, I'll, I'll race you on Miata. I'll fly I'll fly it over there. Uh, the but the race is who can get their headlights to pop up the fastest. <laughs> uh all right. Anyway. Um, ADT. You disappointed oh, everybody we... last week. Last two weeks ago. I disappointed Sorry. three people, dude. You disappointed everybody. We were all disappointed. We all come to <laughs> I expect was very disappointed. an apple juice minute, and you let us down. Well, luckily, you won't feel the same disappointment unless I'm still not funny. Then that is going to be more disappointing. But this week... I actually paid a lot of money to buy four cans of apple juice, but oh. apparently it's a quaffable brew and it's from a great region of these wonderful capitalist free United States. Uh, not one of those commie countries like, you know, England or Scotland or, or Switzerland. Yeah. Or Greece. Uh, <laughs> and it's from a, a, a rather new, I guess, brewery and, uh, who knows more about drinking than depressed New Englanders and hobos? And this beer combines both of them. <laughs> this is a, a brew by a brewery called Lord Hobo Brewing Company. He's the king of the homeless people, which means he probably has a fine palate. He, he sits upon a throne of cardboard boxes <laughs> under a bridge. Of these cans of just empty wine bottles and cans of boom sauce in a nice black and gold <laughs> can, 7.1% alcohol. Let's hear the pop on this baby and just see if we get up. Oh, a little crisp. <laughs> Smells happily hoppy, hop, hoppy and happy. And I'm happy to be drinking this and forgetting anything that I'm doing right now because I'm disappointed in my own self and need to drown all my emotions <laughs> with liquid courage also known as apple juice so cheers to the homeless cheers to the depressed new englanders that are up there probably already treading through the snow and hating life lord hobo boom sauce go get yourself a couple cans for 15 dollars <laughs> <laughs> wow holy cow the apple juice minute returns with the yes. lord of the hobos is it really called that that, that is an interesting name for some apple juice, yeah, boom sauce by Lord Hobo Brewing Company. What is the boom? When's the boom? Like, when is the boom? Is the did boom you not hear me open it? Did oh, you no. not hear that boom. roaring boom? Oh, okay. That's the boom. I think the boom comes when you drink four of them and your head clatters off the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Nothing will ever beat Dan Cush for twenty. I mean, yeah, that was a pretty special, pretty special one to be. Oh fair. yeah, that was, that was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. The last thing that we need to do then is the chalk of the week. Chalk of the week. So, I've got it loaded oh, up. Man. If you guys want to get it, get the videos ready so you can watch them. Watch along. Uh, again, no, no saying whose these are. Yes, so yes, that we're not going to be uh, in no, show, no, show no bias. I've had plenty of chokes the last two Zero weeks that could have. I just hope no one has this, excellently but... edited their video again so that <laughs> they can yeah. work their name out. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, is everyone oh, ready? For he, uh, you yep. specifically, not since you talk over these. <laughs> sure. Uh, All right, let's uh, let's go here and let's start it up now. All right, so stunt track. We're in the pariah, very fast, going into a tube here. Good. Uh, very trick. The big tube. We're in the pariah. Is this Thinking the pariah? Right. This is a pariah. Bitrate's bit okay. gone. Yeah, bitrate's gone because of the uh, tubes. But don't worry about it. We're alongside. He's we're in first. Uh, catch up is slowing him down. That's not good. So catch up is on in this uh, pre. This must be a premium race. 
or whatever those things are called. No, ketchup isn't on in premium. No, ketchup's off on this. Oh, is it not? Oh, oh it takes a cheeky little oh. shortcut underneath the Look track. at this line, under the track. Oh. Oh. And then... Ah. <laughs> oh, is he gonna quit? Anyone that really oh. knows this track will see what I did here. That is the line that you take on the final lap to get to the, uh, the finish line quicker. Oh. And he wasn't on the final lap. Wow, that's pretty Ooh. funny. Okay, Nero Custom here. We're on uh, track in Grapeseed. Uh, leading red, since the first green, lap with it? no issues. Final lap. Here, we're coming in the final lap. Oh, oh. Nope, oh, speed up. Speed's much quicker. I like the audio for this. It's pretty good. Watching some Formula One. Is it Benny Hill? Is it... <laughs> <laughs> Remember that's how we did that? <laughs> Internal screaming oh, no. intensifies. He's flipped it. He's down oh, into dear. second. Oh. He's still got a chance, though. He's not that far away. Oh, we're going to speed the clip up yeah. again. Is this wheel bubble? Oh. oh, no, there's the tree. Oh, that tree. I've I've had uh, collisions with that tree. Now we're down in the third. <laughs> first place, even farther away now. <laughs> Leading since the first lap, of course. And oh, that's pretty rough. The, line so the, the last place. lap, he just he chokes. He just he good. just if chokes. If that was me, I'd was... literally start gripping my controller harder and harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the anger showing. <laughs> All right, this is it. What? What is this? Ooh, oh, we're on some this. kind of crazy stunt, stunt like proper stunt track. Look at that roll and, and flip. I'm very this is some. This is a real stunting. This. Is this one of those you just hold the trigger and just go kind of tracks? It doesn't look like it. Cool. Ooh, I want to try this because I'll probably fail immensely. Yes. Man, look at these proper stunts going Ooh. on from our uh, our. Damn! Our look country. at this. I know it's very impressive. Ooh. I can't even. I don't even have words to describe the flips. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just a roller coaster of emotion and car and twisted metal. <laughs> so. Uh, he's in first. Apparently. He's in first. He's gotten into the lead. From all that skill shown in the clips, <laughs> in the flips. Yeah, even. now he's on just regular ass road. No. So was all that flipping not meant to happen? Yeah. It seems oh, like yeah, that was part of the thing. So. Regular, easy to drive road. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. Oh, he's <laughs> asking himself in the clip if he can win a race. No. Oh, there's the, oh, the rage. No. 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 The, <laughs> the rage in the background. <laughs> oh wow. So yes. Oh, that's Ooh. Why didn't someone prop that pole? Come on. That, yes. The, the lamppost right at the end. <laughs> wow. That's pretty rough. Man. Finished that's... second. On the last I corner. I like the added anger from Ouch. this. Yeah, pretty, pretty, the extra anger. The raw emotion yeah. is really <laughs> pretty good. Oh, that was uh, some good chokes there from everybody. I've got to say. Top job on the yeah, choking. Good, good show. Those are our top three chokes. You guys vote in the chat. The link is there in the chat for you to vote on which one you feel is the the best of all the chokes. The worst of all the performances, you could say. Yo, I used to get hammered on this podcast. You did? Well, now you're all grown yeah. up. <laughs> Dude, I have like, in one episode, one of the first five I had like eight beers while we were doing it. <laughs> oh, jeez. I never noticed it like, that. It was like an hour. <laughs> wow. We were done. I looked over and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I need to take a nap. Is that why but, you progressively got more ridiculous until we got to the apple juice minute at the end? Probably. That was, that was the key to the apple juice minutes. The fact that you were totally destroyed Damn. by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got a job now. Yeah, you're all responsible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, what Actually, do we think? Should we be talking about the chokes? <laughs> I was just gonna say I tried to find you in uh, Spider-Man. I couldn't. I couldn't find you. I looked around for you. I, I went to yeah. I went to where you work. You weren't there. Yeah, that, I was telling us that Hammer before they don't have the World Trade Center in the game. So. Oh. Well, that they have, like, well, that kind of ruins building. my joke because I totally didn't go anywhere and look for you. It was just kind of a joke, <laughs> but. Well, 
Yeah. All right, I'm, um, I'm done. I'm done talking. They have something that looks similar, but it's not in the same part of the city, and it's not the same building. So uh, you would it, World Trade Center's nothing compared to the Avenger building, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, so how are we doing on the on the voting? Uh, we have a clear winner. All right, oh, okay. okay. Let's really? get all our thoughts then before wow. we hear. What do you, uh, uh, what do you oh, guys sorry, think? Go. Yeah, you can go. You're our guest. You go yeah, first. You go first. <laughs> I was going to say, Choke, like the third one, was a pretty brutal one. But I would say the second one was probably more of the guy's the guy he was driving it he was choking more <laughs> yeah like throughout the race on the last lap mm-hmm. and the last guy just choked right at the end but i don't think it was as bad as the other guy choking multiple times yeah the last okay one. so you're going for number two yeah i'm gonna say number two okay i think i'm gonna back that up i think i, th- I like one but i like it for different reasons um, not one sorry number three i like number three but i like it for different reasons uh so number two to me after being in the lead all that time and it was it was some proper choking in a close race nose to tail and then ends up in third i'll go for number two as a the proper choke yeah none of the none of the races for me though none of the chokes were particularly high stakes i mean all the races were like five minutes a piece you know it's not like now copyright oh god (laughs) <laughs> I do it again. God, don't, well, at least, don't say anything. At least the voting is over at over. this point. Anyway, if our second uh. joke uh, was like <laughs> racing for fifteen minutes, um, you know, uh, it would have been different. But it was just five minutes. Yeah, so. I guess that's true. Uh, number two is probably the correct one, but I'm going to go with the one that obviously won, which was number three. So, I want to be on the the side um, of the chat for this one because yeah. I know it won. Oh, you do know that for a fact. Oh, I know that for a fact. I will also agree with Nas. I think that it's hilarious just that he was doing all these crazy flips and landing and doing all this stuff and then just regular just a regular turn on the street. He just flipped. <laughs> yeah. He just like spun out. Like that's the biggest choke of all time. You're just doing all these acrobatics in the air and then you can't drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, Hammer. Give us the results. All right, in third place was uh you guys you guys liked it it was choke number two some mm. things just aren't meant to be by major copyright in third yeah well, in third place so our winner of choke of the week was uh choke number three oh. high stunts fundamentals wow. need work though congratulations oh yeah hitman three three one five hitman he's not, happy. He's not satisfied no. I'm, I'm i'm very i uh, wait are you ready I am pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Hitman. Yeah, you are terrible. You ruined yourself on the what final the corner, second? on the final lap of a race. And... Who got second? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who was who... in second? Who, they get a shout out at least. Yeah, so it was. Like... Uh, it was Bloody Squirrels. Was the uh, Bloody had Squirrels? An interesting interaction with a pipe. <laughs> a regular. He, he's a choke of the week regular. That guy. Yeah. yeah. He is. Oh, it's, yeah. it's amazing that he wins any races. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Hitman. Good job. Top job. Terrible <laughs> job, actually. Yeah, actually, terrible job. But, yeah. <laughs> One idiot. <laughs> right, well, this has been a, a very long podcast in comparison to what we've had recently and a very interesting one. Thank you for coming oh, on, GT yeah. Wise Guy. We've learned well, a lot. I've enjoyed it. It's been a very intriguing conversation. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. And uh, everyone, go subscribe. All of his, his various links yeah. and whatever will be in the chat and in the description of the video. He hasn't we'll, posted in a while. He's yeah. waiting for that algorithm yeah. to win when he posts. Yeah. When he posts, so it'll be a big one. <laughs> I'm finishing up the uh, Vapid Ellie now. So, yeah. um, it won't be too long. I'm starting to import it now, so it'll be probably within the next week. All right, there you go. Next week, it's it's coming. We oh, picked the right time. Yeah, per, per, yeah perfect time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the word for the comments for the next episode. Um, what about LODs? <laughs> I think that would be it. Yeah. Uh, uh, capital been, LOD and then a that, small yeah. s. I, I, I want to count. This is going to be more way for Phil Hoff. I'm sorry. I want to count of how many people actually get it. Like with the capital LOD and then a small s, or how many people actually just put whatever. 
<laughs> I guess that's that's better than my suggestion of Thursday. That was, no, yeah, yeah. That was gonna be my suggestion. Yeah. Uh, LODs. Right. I think if the uh, vanilla works guys get wind of what I've been saying, they'll have a lot to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the good thing about hosting a podcast like this is we can have some kind of distance from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not us saying any of this. <laughs> they, they ask me, I'm like, I, I didn't even know the guy. Okay, no, yeah. I, I didn't know him. I didn't show up, but he was there. <laughs> With respect to those guys, the are talented guys. Oh, yeah. Hello, Absolutely. Hello. <laughs> Everybody in that whole space pretty talented, I think. So. Yeah. As are you, GTA Waikai. Thank you for joining us on this yep. little porky little show. Yeah. Chick for lads. Yeah. <laughs> Chick for I thought for a long time, Brophy, that you didn't like me. <laughs> oh, no. Really? Well, because um, I didn't invite you to the podcast. No, no, it's no? not that. It's just, um, I think on a, quite a few occasions, I've like tried to contact you. I've like, left comments or I've tweeted you or something, and you've just not responded. That's that's <laughs> part for the course. He never answers my stuff either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not, that's not, uh, that's nothing personal to anyone. I just don't answer anything anymore. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> So sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I feel bad now. <laughs> That's okay. And on that bombshell, we shall end the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Any political so prisoner, prisoner, Lieutenant Bantry, he did nothing wrong. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh... <laughs> the political prisoner. Oh, man. Just end it. Do you want to say goodbye, guys? Goodbye. Said my piece. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> See you all later. <laughs>